Before I get into this, can I say a big thank you to EA for the early access copy of F1 23 as part of the EA Creator Network. But hello, how are you doing? Welcome to a brand new series. I'm Joe. If you're new around here, make sure you click that subscribe button for daily F1 23 content. We'll be doing the full break and point story as well as a driver career mode, immersive driver career mode with alfa romeo that will be starting up and uh, hopefully you'll check out that as well and uh, that's going to be an incredible journey so i can't wait to get involved in more of that of course f1 manager 2023 will be coming out as well so hopefully you can join me for all of those in a summer of formula one but uh, the focus of this video will be the start of breaking point two if you don't know the story so far you can check out my playlist on Breaking Point 1, which was in the F1 21 game. Really enjoyed it. Looking forward to seeing where we go to in this chapter of the story. So make sure you leave a like if you enjoy. And of course, get involved down in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's get into Breaking Point 2. So there's uh, three modes. Uh, great for newcomers. I mean, we probably don't want to do that. Um, let's go for challenge and difficulty. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Previously in Breaking Point. Aiden, please tell us, how does it feel to be on the verge of getting behind the wheel for your very first race? I feel like a little kid. I look around and I'm surrounded by my heroes. And tell me about Casper Ackerman. How is that relationship coming along? It wasn't my fault. Well, whose fault was it then? He tried to stop them from signing you. Didn't want to play babysitter. We all feel sorry for you, mate. You never stood a chance with him. I had a call this morning from Christian Horner. You're being watched. You know what his problem is, don't you? Thinks you're getting too old. You want respect, you give respect. That's how it works. How about you give me a little respect? How about you earn it first? I'm done. You what? I'm retiring. Why didn't it work out between you two? He's on more money than me. What? He didn't want me on the team. Didn't I? And you thought I was past my best. So none of this is true? There's always gossip in the paddock. And ever since he's arrived, it's been one man at the center of it all. I want us to push for fourth. I want us to beat Butler. And I want that seat to go to you. So Alfa Romeo potentially on track to really upset Alfa Tauri here. Butler's closing in on Ackerman. Down the inside he goes, and they've hit each other. Butler into the barrier, and that looks to be the end of the race for him. The Dutchman looks to be continuing, and it's great to see him still in this fight, Crofty. Go for third, eight. What about Katzba? We let Aiden pass. Let Aiden pass. We did it. We did it. Have you seen the crash yet? Butler's okay? Bruised ego, perhaps. <laughs> well, there you go. Miami Grand Prix. Several races in the 2022 season. Chapter 1. 2022, a new era for Formula One, an overhaul of the technical regs, marks the first major update of the sport for several years, but it's not only the new cars that are turning heads down in the paddock. Now, of course, uh, we did our journey with Williams, and it was Total Wolf that was um, asking questions, I believe, in, in our particular playthrough, but uh, that was a good little roundup and uh, got me hyped and ready to go. Here we go. What was it like bringing a brand new team to the F1 grid? You know, the first time you see a car, your car, with your branding, your name on it, in an official race, alongside Ferrari, McLaren, Mercedes, that's what it's all about. You make it sound like a dream come true. If only. When did you first get a sense of what was in store for Connor Sport? 
2022 season, <clears throat> straight out of the box. The drivers were always going to clash. That was a calculated risk. But the car, mm, the car, the car had problems. We're midway through the Miami Grand Prix. It's been a cracking race so far, and it's all up for grabs. Absolutely, Crofty. Some fantastic driving here today, especially, I have to say, from Aiden Jackson. I don't think I've ever seen the Connor Sport car being put through its paces quite like this. This is a team, Connor Sport, that have got a lot to prove this season, but Jackson might just be the man to do it. So just to bring you guys uh, back into it, uh, I did go hard. It was way too easy on uh, challenging, so... Uh, yeah, just bear that in mind uh, for you guys, but uh, let's get into uh, chapter one. So our primary objective is to okay, finish the race. So let's try and bring that gap down to the car ahead if you can. Copy that. Looks like we're on fairly new soft tyres at this point in the Grand Prix. Yuki Tsunoda right in front of us. Now are we going to be able to pass him? Not certain. Need to make sure we get a good exit here, but nearly pushing him through. That's how much extra speed we got at this stage of the race and that's a very good place to overtake him he's a little bit of overtake to just push in front of him and you can see Mick Schumacher and Fernando Alonso fighting it out a little bit of contact with the wall I think we're okay though as we head into lap 8 of this Grand Prix Look at this, this is a, a great run on Fernando Alonso. Not going to risk it down the inside there, but just stay close to him and hopefully get past him and Schumacher with the DRS. So here we go. DRS enabled and Alonso squeezes us right up against the wall. And we're now right in the gearbox of Mick Schumacher and we go down the inside here and manage to hold him off. Oh, a little bit of wheel spin out of the corner there. This game feels incredible on a pad this year compared to previous years. I really feel led the car. And now Lando Norris and Valtteri Bottas not too far ahead. Next guy's on track as we go purple in the middle sector but look at this Norris and Bottas are battling it out and well this could give us an opportunity we must be on brand new soft tyres here while they're on mediums and hards and here we go a little bit of overtake to get ourselves past Norris and well Bottas is closing in he spotted that we were there though Oh, that was close, but we managed to get through, and now up to seventh, uh, sorry, ninth place. Uh, Ocon is the one ahead of us. We've just got to finish the race. That's our ob objective here in this first chapter. Well, we've got DRS on Ocon. I'm not sure we're going to be able to do it because we've got no. Overtake, but we do risk it down the inside. Little bit of contact there. Oh, let's have a little look at that on the replay there as we flew through. You can see Ocon just ahead there, but we risked it all. Opened up the inside, and Ocon, well, he made a little bit of contact. I think he was a little bit daft there to turn in on us. We were well ahead at that point, and... If he thought that he had the corner, then he should have backed out slightly and did the old switcheroo. 
We've got uh, Lewis Hamilton up ahead here. Just over a second in front. I don't think we're going to get DRS on this lap, which is a bit of a shame, but we should get some nice slipstream from him. And it looks like it's up. Sergio Perez not far ahead of Lewis, or is that one of the Alpha Tauris? It might be an Alpha Tauri, actually. And here we go. Beautiful exit onto this start finish straight. And we've got a chance on Lewis Hamilton, and we do fly it down the inside. And we've just got so much more grip at this stage of the Grand Prix than everybody else. And it feels like we're driving a Red Bull, never mind a Connor Sport motor car. <laughs> Five laps of fuel remaining. I'm losing power! Why am I losing power? Copy that, we see it, we're looking into it. Okay, I'm afraid you're gonna have to retire the car, please, Aiden. Retire the car. Uh, you're joking! I'm sorry, Aiden. Pull over now, please. Pull over now. This is getting ridiculous! And that's agonizing for Jackson. Just a few laps left to go, and he's out of the Miami Grand Prix. Oh, with every race, the car looks like a constant problem for Connor Sport. It must be devastating for the drivers. Confirmation as the car comes to a halt, the Connor Sports Aiden Jackson won't be seeing the checkered flag today. But it looks like his teammate will. Jackson's DNF puts Devon Butler in a position where he might just be able to secure some points for Connor Sports. Aiden's out. Yep, engine problem, I'm afraid. <laughs> Good job you got me. All right, Devon, don't push it too hard. We cannot risk losing both cars here. It's in the bag, mate. All OK, Aiden. <sighs> yeah, uh, how's Devon doing? Yeah, he's doing all right, mate. He looks like he's going to bring home some points for the team. Good for him. Well, there you go. There you go. Post race in chapter one. Frustration and engine issue forces Connor Sports Aidan Jackson to ret retire from the Miami Grand Prix. Only a few laps from the end of the race. If it's not one thing, then it's another. Did you not see what happened out there today? Aidan, I agree with you 100%. We are doing everything we can. I know the car is not perfect, but. Andreo, it's every race. Do you know how I look losing easy points like this? Knock, knock. <laughs> Sounds like there's a right show going on in here. What am I missing? Not now, Devon. Aiden and I were just discussing issues with the car. Again? I thought that was all in hand. I, I had no problems today. It was smooth. You know what they say, a shoddy workman always blames his tools. <laughs> mate, 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 mate. You can look at my setup data any time you want. I've told you that. It might help. And I've told you before. It's not a setup issue. The problem is... Jackson, that was the problem with the 2022 season. Ask anyone. I mean, at the end of 21, everyone thought Aiden was going to be signed by one of the big three. But uh, I guess they couldn't reach an agreement, so we both signed for Connor Sport. And do you think that affected Aiden? <laughs> That's no secret. Now, for that 22 season, Jackson was a nightmare. Okay, hub. Uh, between story events, you'll return to the hub. Here you can check the latest news, your social feed, emails, and even receive phone calls from other characters throughout the course of Breaking Point 2. The character you control in these hubs can change from visit to visit, each one offering a different perspective on life at Connorsport. Performance and reputation. From here, you'll also be able to check the performance and re reputation. These new additions to Breaking Point 2 will fluctuate based on your actions both on and off the track. Given a higher level in each rating will result in a wide range of responses available in both present views and department events. Performance is largely related to how well you and the Connor Sport team performed during races if it will be affected by things such as your finishing position or if you manage to secure the fastest lap of the race be mindful however that other factors outside the race 
may also affect performance. Reputation is all to do with how well the media, fans and F1 world perceive you and the team. From appearing frustrated in a post-race interview uh, to outperforming your rivals on track, all of this will be reflected by your reputation level. Responding to your actions, news, social posts, emails and phone calls can all be impacted by your actions elsewhere. In Breaking Point 2, these icons will highlight if a piece of content is present due to your actions with each representing a different source. From reputation, performance, on-track actions or press and department event choices, you'll be able to identify how the F1 world is responding to your choices and decisions. Right, let's have a little look at all of that then. So we've got the news here. Um, we've got plenty of racing etiquette, which is good. Ooh. Hayden, hey, 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 I wanted to give you a heads up. Now look, the crew has shared the latest telemetry data with us. Fine, um, but I, I don't think it will tell me anything I don't already know. Just humor me, okay? I'd like you to go through it. Let me know if anything jumps out. I'm keen to iron out these problems as quickly as possible for you. Sure thing. Thanks, Andrea. No thanks needed. I've got your back, Aiden. Remember what I said when you joined the team. I won't let you down. Ackerman wouldn't let me hear the end of it. <laughs> yeah, sounds like Casper. Y you know who told me the same, right? It's just... It's just tricky, what with the car and... Devin poking his nose in any chance he gets. There is a lot going on, for sure, but we're a team. We'll get there. I'll have a word with the Devon. Tell him to give you some space, both on and off the track, okay? <laughs> yeah, all right. Good luck with that. Okay, cool. Right, social. Got to feel sorry for Aiden Jackson. Feeling like Jackson should probably put the car in reverse. It'd be quicker. Clearly getting preferential treatment. Such a great season. It breaks down more often than me. That's uh, than mine. Okay, that's uh, Arava there. I don't see Captain Goodspeed in there. Maybe next year. Who knows? And Davidson. <laughs> okay, cool. Right, emails. Let's have a little look. So, moving forward, I appreciate how hard everyone is working. We are getting so much right. And I also understand how infuriating it can be. For everyone, when a problem persists and simply won't go away, rest assured both myself and the management team are acutely aware of the continuing issues with the car and will be enacting a plan to address them as quickly as possible, getting the car up to optimal performance and alleviating everyone's stress levels in the process. Okay. Thank you to all. I couldn't be proud of what we all achieved so far. All right, fair enough. Um... Yeah, there's our call. That's fine. And uh, without further ado, let's get ourselves into Chapter 2. So we're at the Canadian Grand Prix six weeks later. Connor Sports' maiden season continues to be marred by inconsistency, but the team principal, Andre O'Connor, remains hopeful that their luck will start to change as the paddock heads to Montreal. You're the boss. Throughout the course of Breaking Point 2, you not only control the drivers, but also Connor Sports Team Principal, Andre O'Connor. I had no idea that that was going to happen. Okay. Department events. During these visits to the team data centre, Andre will have to make difficult decisions covering a range of topics during department events. How you choose to respond to these will have a direct effect on many things, such as your performance and rep. Uh, they may even affect a bonus objective. Hey with this being their home circuit, Stroll and Latifi have been all over the local media this weekend. One particular outlet appeared bent on using our recent struggles to pump up the expectations of the home drivers. They indicated that Connor Sport were easy fodder for the Canadian pair and that our drivers shouldn't put up much competition. Okay, fodder, we'll show them who's fodder. I won't be drawn in on this. We have our goals and we know what level of performance we expect from our drivers. Um, hmm. 
Yeah, I think that one. Uh, Devon was on a popular streamer's channel earlier this week and promised a behind-the-scenes tour of our factory for next Thursday. This clashes with our scheduled team-building days for the engineers back at the factory. Normally, I would say we don't let drivers fight off or fly to fancy uh, interfere with our... Or Devon, sorry, fly to fancy interfere with our plans. But that video has received a lot of views. The streamer has con contacted us to confirm the tour. What cause of action would you like us to take? We'll have to reschedule the team building. Um, let the tour, we can't put the toothpaste back in the tube now. Cancel the team building and let the tour go ahead. But Devon is getting in front of that camera and leading the tour. He promises he delivers. Uh, I think neutral. Okay. So we are now Andrea Connor. Uh, Devon's over promise. Oof. Goes down a little bit. Okay. So news continuing car troubles. Um. Oh. Andrea. Just going over those uh, last minute strategy changes you sent over. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make it clear. Whatever happens out there today, I get pit priority. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see how the race develops. If you need priority, you'll get it. But I can't go into the race with that on the table. Look, 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 look. We all know Jackson's not pulling his way. Now, if you want the points, I need to make sure he's not going to get in my way. Do you get me? Devon, 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 we've talked about this. Give Aiden some space. It's not about you getting in the way of each other. It's about everyone pulling together, racing as a team. Of course, of course, yeah. So, uh, pit priority, yeah? <laughs> All right, ciao. Okay, right. A message from Davidoff Butler here. To each and every member of our illustrious team, I just want to wish everyone the best of luck. But I know we won't need it. Andreo tells me we're making real progress, finding solutions. I've already told the boys if they don't bring home the points, there'll be trouble. So he's the chief executive of, 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 of Butler Global. Linda Clifton, book and confirmation, your father's flight. Just wanted to send you a little reminder. We've booked Antonio's flight out to Japan. Business class, as you requested. I've put in your diary, but wanted to check you still... Want to meet him personally at the airport. Happy to send a car along with someone. Hmm. This all sounds tough. Uh, we have an attachment. Let's view that. Okay, so Max Verstappen is leading the way in Jackson 15th as it stands. Okay, let's go to the race. Here we go. With several laps remaining, Aidan Jackson pushes on as he hopes to secure some much-needed points for Connor Sport. Into turn two we go now. Butler comes out of the pit lane. Jackson is right there with him. This is dicey, Ant. Neither one of these two wants to give way. This would have been a lot cleaner if Jackson had just let him go. He's just not giving him an inch. They continue onwards, still will to Ooh. wheel, almost touching there as well, as we head down the straight towards the next chicane. Nothing to separate either car, and through the chicane we go, and now Jackson sends them both off the track, and Butler over a curb. That looked nasty. And I do believe that one of their cars is damaged here, Crofty. I think it's Butler. Damage, Ant, but also they've lost places too. Unbelievable and totally unnecessary as well. Well, one damaged car, places now to make up. What a complete mess that was. Well, here we go. Primary objective reclaimed 13th place. Okay, calm yourself down. We'll look at it in the debrief later, but right now I want you to go and get those places back. Come on, let's go. So we don't have that long to to go here. Yeah, we were looking at Schumacher there, but 
going to... Oh, dear. Well, I think we're okay. Wow, that could have been bad. Bonus objective, finishing the top ten. Okay, this is a chance to go down the inside of Mick Schumacher. Get out onto the marbles. That wasn't exactly what we wanted there. And now Nicholas Latifi not far in front of us here. Devin Butler not that far behind on track. Just wondering if he might be scripted to get back into this. Looks like we are pulling away from him and now Nicholas Latifi, this is going to be a chance down the inside and we do manage it, that was uh, very nice indeed ok Esteban Ocon is next on our hit list uh, right behind the Frenchman now and look how much of a run we've got on him here this is good no DRS though weirdly We have to go down the inside of the chicane and we make it stick. Oh, that was very, very close. So let's have a little look at this on the replay. We were right in his slipstream. No DRS assistance there. That was just a good old-fashioned overtake. Went down the inside. Took Ocon a little bit by surprise there once again. And um, we are now up to 14th place. So one more place to get the primary objective from today well here we go with Alex Albon then DRS enabled this time and squeezing us right up against the wall but we should be okay trying to save as much ERS as possible for the final couple of laps we're on to lap 15 of this Grand Prix now the objective is to try and get up to 10th and get that bonus performance or bonus objective completed. Well, Charles Leclerc is out of the Grand Prix. Now is he in front of us? Caution, I think caution. so. Okay, clear. No safety car. But that improves our chances of finishing 10th, and we might even do it by the end of this lap, to be honest with you. Lando Norris going pretty slow at the moment. A lovely exit out of that corner, already going to be past Zhou Guan Yu as we open the DRS, and now. Lando Norris just in front here. Great maneuver. You made it look so easy. And this should be a chance to get by. And it is. Okay, we've uh, managed to catch up to Lance Stroll in all of this time. Should be able to overtake him here. And I realise I don't think I, I said anything when we overtook Norris. I was just so engrossed in the racing. It was really, really close racing. But here we go. We are past Lance Stroll. And I believe that probably would have been the objective had we went for the the confident response would have been to finish ahead of Latifi and Stroll so I'm glad we managed to do both okay, of those things lap. anyway but uh, two points on the board as it stands now there's Valtteri Bottas this is the final lap of the race so we will stay with the action all the way until checkered flag Very nice here, right up against the wall there, and right. 
behind Valtteri Bottas now. Can we get him before the end of this lap? That's the question. Using a good bit of overtake there. Get ourselves nice and close. With a nice smooth transition to traction and here we go. This is a great chance now on Valtteri Bottas. We've got DRS. He's got DRS as well. And it's Carlos Sainz that has won the Grand Prix. Oh, are we going to manage to get past Valtteri Bottas up the line? I think we are. Very good. Overtake up to the finish. And we finish in eighth. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. So it's been a day of drama here at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve today. Brandt, what stood out for you? Well, it must be the Connor Sport moment between the two drivers there. Banging wheels, not giving each other room on track. It was entertaining, of course, but definitely for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, we enjoyed it, certainly. And Aidan Jackson, well, he'd have enjoyed the result. He did well to recover. He did do well to recover, but, you know, you never want to see two cars, if, if you're the team boss, seeing two cars hit each other. It's rule number one. Don't hit your teammate. Given all the problems they've had this season, though, getting one car over the finish line, that's probably a big result for them today. Ferrari are at it again. An excellent performance at today's Grand Prix, and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. Okay, Canadian Grand Prix post race. Nothing ever changes. Jackson and Butler's rivalry from the past two seasons seems to be alive and well, even when their teammates. Their unwillingness to cede position to each other at the Canadian Grand Prix is a bad look for Connor Sport. Well, there you go. Let's see if we get any sort of phone call to finish this off. Uh, we've got Calamity. You can read these if you fancy. And here he is. Aiden, just, uh, just a heads up. We're putting the debrief back by 30 minutes. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Listen, while I've got you on, what happened out there today? It wasn't my fault. Devon thinks he's the only one driving. I don't want to dwell on it too much at the meeting, but this is not how you run a team. You know this. Of course. It's just... No, no, I don't want to hear it. We have enough problems as it is. Whatever has gone on between you two in the past, I need you to put it to bed. Sure. I don't want to have to talk to you like this, Aiden, and I'll be saying the same to Devon. Come on now. Sure. See you at the debrief. Okay, back with Aiden then. So just thought I'd send you a cheeky hello from Sunny Barbados. Been watching your race. Nice to see some things never change. And by that I mean Butler's still a clown. Can't say I miss it, to be honest. Retirement life is suiting me just fine. Sun, sea, sand and all the trimmings to go with it. Fell asleep on the beach last night. Had to do the walk of shame back to the hotel this morning. Can you believe it at my age? Hope all is well. Let's catch up at the end of the season once I'm home. Anyway... Race fast, kid, and don't be a stranger. So that's Brian Doyle. And FYI, for everyone attending the debrief, we're putting the meeting back by half an hour. It means everyone's got time to grab a coffee and take a comfort break, which I suggest you all do. We've got a lot to discuss. What happened out there today is not a good look. I expect better. Tomorrow's interview. I'll message you in the morning. Um, but remember, you've got that phone interview at 5.30am. I tried to rearrange due to the time difference, but we've postponed it twice now, so I think we have to take the hit. Details are in your diary. Just try and make sure to read the brief before you're dialed in. Also, just a reminder that the auction for Nigel Manson's racing gloves is next month. If you really want them, we need to discuss how high you're willing to go. You'll be mid-race at the time of the auction, so I'll have to bid for you, and I don't want to break the bank. 
do let's get ourselves into it after the contact in Canada. It's all going to hit the fan, I think. So, Hungarian Grand Prix several weeks later, with over half the 22, 22 season now in the books and having endured more than their fair share of teething issues, Aidan Jackson and the team at Connor Sport attempt to prove the doubt as wrong and make a strong statement before heading into the summer break. Uh, hey there, can you uh, raise that lamp about six inches, right? Excellent. A butler should always look sharp. <laughs> so. At what point in the 22 season was it clear to you that the team was struggling? Oh, well, right after the Hungarian GP. I may only be the money, but even to me it was obvious. The whole thing was a sham. Yet again, Connor Sports Jackson and Butler battling it out on track. It seems as Hang if on they... two seconds, Nat. OK, Devon, Aidan's lapping faster than you. I need you to let him pass, please. Devon, do you copy? Listen to me, I need you to let Aidan pass now. Butler just completely blanking the order there. Seems like he can even acknowledge it. Too true, but as you can see, no way through for Jackson. No way at all. This Connor Sport rivalry is getting heated on the track here in Hungary. Okay, here we go. Objective overtake Butler before lap 14. Oh, come on, this is a joke. What lap are we on? Here we go then. Yeah, we've got plenty of time really. We should be able to do it straight away, I would imagine. We've got a lot of spare energy. Okay to use your overtake button. And there we go, down the inside. There's nothing he's going to be able to do to stop us there. And we are through on Devin. That's exactly what we wanted, just uh, showing you. We came from a long way back there, but I think it was important to use that momentum, use that extra grip in the tyres that we we have, and uh, we managed to, to pull away nicely. So, nice that we managed to, to do that pretty quickly. Now then, objective updated, finish in the top 10. Bonus, finish in the top 8 and get fastest lap, goodness me. Well, Sebastian Vettel is next. I mean, this is not a, a great overtaking uh, <laughs> track, is it? So to get all the way up to t uh, top 8 would be... Very impressive. We must be on brand new tyres here. I'm guessing. Well, here we go. Got a chance on Seb Vettel now. The car ahead's losing two seconds a lap to you. Good job. We should be able to get down the inside of Alex Albon. That's a good double overtake on those two there. And now chasing after Daniel Ricciardo in the McLaren. This could be a chance on the Honey Badger here. Daniel Ricciardo star breaking down the inside and we are through. And now you can see Fernando Alonso and Esteban Ocon together on the track. Let's see if we can have a double overtake like we had with Vettel and Albon last lap. Look at this. Oh, caught the curb a little bit, nearly went. Flying had to come out of it. Just a touch there. And that might mean we're not going to get past on this lap but well we go down the inside of Ocon anyway we take plenty of curb and now we have a chance on Fernando Alonso oh nearly onto the grass but uh, now up to P10 and this car feels pretty good to be honest with you can we get it up to P8 and get faster slap that's the plan now okay that 
Oh, right behind Kevin Magnussen this time. DRS enabled, and we are through. And who's this coming out of the pit lane? It's Charles Leclerc. Oh, Norris, is he going to be able to get through? I don't think so. So I'm going to use a bit of DRS to stay with these guys. Here we go, up towards turn four. Oh, nearly got all out of shape there. And we go down the inside, and we are through very nicely. And we've got Bottas and Leclerc now. And here we go. DRS, we're going to sandwich Bottas. get on the brakes very nicely there and now let's see if we can put in a, a fast lap here and let's see if this is going to be a faster slap no not quite yeah I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that but we might be able to get Carlos Sainz into the top 5 as well Okay, here we come then on to the final lap of the race. We are right behind Carlos Sainz, as okay, expected. Final lap, final lap of the race. Gap to your teammate behind mm, he's is very kind and seconds. gets out of the way, allowing us to get a, a lovely line into turn two. I'm going to give it our everything here to try and make somewhere near the fastest lap of the race. Going to be almost impossible on tyres this old, but okay, we've only got one lap of fuel remaining. We'll give it a go, feels good so far. It's not bad. Absolutely nail in this so far, but yeah, red in the middle sector. Because we just don't have that extra grip that we had earlier in the Grand Prix. But we are going to be just behind Sergio Perez as we come round the final corner. And it's Max Verstappen that's won the Hungarian Grand Prix. And we come over the line in fifth place. That's a very, very good performance. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. So Nats, who else out there deserves a mention today? Well, I feel like there are a couple, but let's start with Aidan Jackson. Couldn't agree more. Jackson had a brilliant race, didn't he? Yeah, we know Connor Sport has struggled all season. Jackson's done really well today, and that's in spite of the problems with his own teammate. Even before they became teammates, these two had their fair share of run-ins. It's a fascinating rivalry. You can't take your eyes off it for one moment. But nonetheless, some much-needed points today for Connor Sport. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently, and it's clear to see that they've put in the work, and they should be so proud of the victory they've secured here. A good race out there again today, Aidan. But what we do all want to know, what exactly happened with Devon? It sounded like he completely ignored a direct team order. Yeah. What do you expect? It's Devon. He was out of order out there. Uh, he really needs to rein it in. He's not the only one driving. I'm sure the team will have a lot to say about it. Well, he did certainly seem to cause you some trouble out there today. And after that, and what happened in Canada, 
What would you say to those wondering if the old Jackson Butler rivalry is well and truly back? <laughs> no, that's that's in the past, definitely. Uh, we're on the same team now. That's what matters. If there's anything that happens between me and Devon on track, it's because we're we're so focused on making Connor's a success. We're bound to tread on each other's toes from time to time. So issues with Devon aside, how do you feel it went out there today? Do you think the team will be pleased with your performance? Uh, it was a good result, for sure. Uh, but to be honest, Natalie, there's there's always room for improvement. Uh, I'll be I'll be studying all the all of the race footage and looking for new opportunities. The team will be doing the same with the car, I'm, I'm sure. So you mentioned the car there. In that regard, Connor Sports not had the easiest of times so far this season. Has that all been sorted? Are those reliability concerns well and truly behind you? At the end of the day, there's there's always going to be common problems for a new team like us. But, you know, everyone at the factory, everyone's working really, really hard, and I'm super proud of them. You know, each race is going to take us a step further to where we need to be. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Excellent uh, interview there with Natalie. I, I really hope that that is in the um, you know career mode going forward as well. But uh, anyway, despite Devin's lack of cooperation, Aiden still manages to get past his Connorsport teammate and secure points for the team at the Hungaro okay. ring. I leave that in your capable hands, Devin. You had a problem with a team order today. Didn't happen. What? Look, I know everyone's saying I ignored it, but it didn't happen. I never got the order. Check the comms. Shoddy workman always blames his tools, eh? Check the comms. Okay, we check the communication pipeline. Fix it. This cannot happen again. Typical. Aiden, listen. What's the point? It's just... Devon being Devon. And what? That makes it okay? He's an arrogant... No, you're right to call him out. But imagine if we didn't give him certain freedoms. He'd be even harder to manage. As his father, I know. Aiden, you're the best driver that we have. And it's right for you to put Devon in his place. He needs it. The team needs it. Thanks. Between you and me, I don't think this team is right for me. I think... Honestly, we don't deserve you. And I know that you're being discussed at other teams. So just keep doing what you're doing. Sure. I'm sorry if I've spoken out of turn. About Devon? <laughs> Not at all. You know the best way to keep Devon in his place? What's that? Beat him. Well, there you go. Right, back with... Uh, Could you take a look at this, please? Back with the team boss. Connor Sport have been contacted by a film production company. They are currently in the pre-production phase for the latest instalment in the ever-popular Throttle Zone movie franchise and want to offer a cameo role to one of your drivers. They also keen to use Connor Sport branding within the pitch and it would be an excellent opportunity to help. The question is which driver should represent Connor Sport. Aiden would be an excellent ambassador. It's clear that he's been feeling a little underappreciated, so this could serve as the ego boost he needs. Yeah, I think let's go for Aiden. There we go. When challenged by the press about disregarding team order, Devon went public about the comms issue. We're now being pressured for a statement. What's our response? We don't want to create any unnecessary controversy. We'll protect Devon for now he can't go around state that there was no issue that should keep Devon we still don't know ourselves let's be open and state that we're running tests and looking into it yeah the factory tour went ahead with the streamer and Devon leading the way he made a couple of gaffes regarding the team working for him it's not a great look for Connor Sport as a whole and I don't think some of the engineers were too happy about it adding the fact the team building days had to be rescheduled and morale is quite low Okay, right, let's have a little look then. We've got the news. Um, let's have a listen to this. Davidoff. So, uh, I had a word with Aiden. And? Nothing to worry about. Don't think there'll be any more problems. 
What did you say? Doesn't matter. We level with each other. Just leave Aiden to me from now on. And uh, what about Devon? What about Devon? We both know it wasn't the comms, right? Andrea, listen. Devon may push his luck from time to time, but I won't have his integrity questioned. If he says it was the comms, then you know what to do. Yes? Right. <clears throat> sure. I'll have them checked again. See that you do. Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Right, let's look at the... Oh, there's there's uh, Tim Marduk. <laughs> yeah, still no Captain Goodspeed in here, though. Come on, here. Yeah. <laughs> right, an update on comms. We've checked... Uh, as requested zero problems or faults every single time even when we've tried to cause a fault to replicate what could have happened they've come back to perfect happy to send across a full technical report but between us i think the problem may lie with the driver let's know what you need to do okay reschedule antonio's flight that's no problem at all there's no issue with the flight we've already rebooked it business class and the problem is with the hotel with antonio coming out earlier uh, they haven't got room for the extra three days. I've booked him in at the Lancaster. It's only a couple of streets away from where you're all staying. But it's a definite upgrade. Really hope he likes it. Okay, has he told you anything further? Okay, fair enough. And, uh, well, hopefully it will all resolve itself soon. But uh, let's get ourselves into the next chapter. Hey, we need your input on this one. Okay, here we go. Being the new team on the grid, it has its advantages. Our merchandise has proved really popular, much more so than we were expecting. With some lines either sold out or stock running low, we've had a word with the sportswear division, and they can't increase production without affecting other Connor Sport lines. This issue is a bit bigger than just your f1 interest how should we handle this if we increase the merchandise uh the team making the team successful helps every part of the business okay make do i trust our manufacturing team let's keep with the existing schedule perhaps the scarcity will drive the demand in the long run i'm gonna hmm. oh is that locked that's locked i can't increase production okay just have to make do the R&D department have been in touch. They need to finalise their schedule for the coming months in order to cement their plans for next season. They are keen to shift focus solely towards the 2023 car, uh, but there are some conflicting opinions uh, in engineering as they believe they are uh, some easy gains to be made. Where should they focus their attention? Easy gains may well help us grab a high position and that money is going to be integral. I think we're going to have to make do with what we've got this year. More development time we get on next year's car. Let's try for both. I'm willing to pay overtime to the relevant teams to make this a possibility. Let's go. Brilliant. So what about Callie Mayer? Was she on your radar at this point? Of course. She was making big waves in F2. And Ackerman would not shut up about her. The Netherlands F2 Sprint Race. Upcoming F2, British F2 driver Callie Mayer finds herself dominating the competition in the sprint race at Zandvoort. Not content to sit out in front. Leading the race, Mayer and the team at tried and try to opt for an unorthodox strategy. Here's our race leader, Callie Mayer. She has been blisteringly fast around Zandvoort here today. Look at that! She's going into pit! Interesting strategy they've decided on there. She has been lapping at rapid pace, but is this the right call? Yeah, it's a bold move for sure. Looks crazy to me, but let's find out. Here she goes then on brand new tyres. The rest of the field still sticking with their original set. Where exactly does Callie Mayer come out? Let's see. Here we go then. So I'm guessing we're just on brand new soft tyres, everybody else on old hards. 
Let's win the okay, race. Kelly, let's go. We're going to leave it to you. You know what to do. Come on. It Come does bug me that the engineer is the same for every driver. Devon, Aiden, Cali. You could do with, uh, you know, some different voices in there. You could bring Jeff back. And here we go. She goes down the inside. Very nice. Up to 11th now. I feel like we've always been pretty strong at Zango in terms of how well we drive here, so expecting similar again today. But we're 14 seconds behind Armstrong with seven laps to go. Here we go then. Chance to go down the inside. A little bit of contact on the way through, but we're okay. Rouvelet. It's going to be the old switcheroo this time. Oh, a little bit wide onto the grass. Wow, that could have been a big incident there, but managed to hold it. That was still a purple first sector, believe it or not. going to be an inside opportunity here well, here we go and we're going to have a chance on Fittipaldi here oh there's a bit of contact oh, that could have been the end of the race so we've uh, been contact heavy this Grand Prix but or this F2 sprint I should say but yeah that's uh thought we would have enough grip but in these F2 cars just not quite enough but we do manage to get past Fittipaldi in the end our chance on Teo Porsche this time and we head down the inside and now Iwasa just in front and there we go we are through now there's Logan Sargent. Oh, out onto the rumble strips there. That could have really hurt the car. But now I'm going to have a, a great chance on Logan Sargent here and for the first time. DRS for us. outside we go and now up to fifth place and six seconds behind race leader Armstrong well what a move around the outside of the bank there and now with DRS very much enabled we head into the th third final lap of this race three seconds behind Armstrong and just getting stronger with every passing minute trying to go under oh that was beautiful we have got some yellow flags and who's that that's the leader Armstrong has an engine failure wow Marcus Armstrong is out I don't know if that always happens. We'd have caught him anyway, but... Now just Lawson ahead. McCarlin. Car. And now... DRS. Down the inside we go. And that's perfect. Into the lead. We go again, and that should be us until the end of the race now. Well, here we are on the final lap. We're going to come round the final corner here at Zandvoort, and we are going to be on the top step of the podium because Kali Mea is going to come round, and she's going to win. Here in Holland, it's a beautiful victory. 
Very well done. Callie Mayer, take a bow. What a masterclass to finish first here in the Netherlands. It was such an unlikely strategy from Mayer, but she and the team have made a success of it. What a race, what a performance, what a genuine joy to watch. Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations and it's going to be Trident picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for coming out on top in that amazing race. Okay, Maya uh, manages to win in convincing fashion after an unconventional pit stop. Each race win shows why Maya is such a promising young driver in F2. Kelly, what do you put your success down to this season? Oh, I'd say probably my speed. In what way? I find lapping faster than everyone else really, really helps. Casper, <laughs> Casper. No, no, no. Seriously, though, I have a great team around me, and this guy, more than anyone else, has been pretty useful to have around. <laughs> Gasper, what are you shy? Come up here. Yes, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. And Callie says you've been a factor this season, Casper. I'm not the one driving. Didn't agree with my tyre strategy, though. <laughs> this one has no respect for her elders. <laughs> but can you give us more detail as to the exact role that you're playing, Casper? None whatsoever. It's all about her. He's probably right, to be fair. So, were you already in touch with Casper Ackerman at that point? <laughs> Ackerman and I go way back. Okay, there we go. So we are Callie here. Are we going to get a phone call? Let's have a look at the news. Biggest surprise of the season. Oh, here we go. Let me guess, you saw the race, couldn't be prouder, and everyone in the office wouldn't stop screaming. <laughs> well, that saved me a few minutes. Guess I'll speak to you later then. <laughs> How are you, Mum? Oh, I couldn't be prouder, Cal. That was one hell of a race. Everyone in the office wouldn't stop screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Honestly? The way you're driving, I think we're going to have to change your name. What's here this time? Callie Winner. You've got this in the bag, Cal. Oh, okay. That, that is the kind of award-winning journalism that we really do need right now, but one race at a time, okay? <laughs> that sounds like Casper talking. Is he looking after you? Yeah, yeah, always. Uh, actually, I've got a meeting with him that I'm running a bit late for, so I've got a dash, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, sweetheart. Call me tonight and well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Cal, I've told you before, I have no desire to ever speak to the press. I would get so wound up by journalists. I swear it's the only reason I got a reputation for being cold back in F1. Although I imagine Zoe would tell you different. This is your time to shine, and from what I saw, you're a natural in front of the camera. I, I really hope... They call it my good side. Uh, Cass. Okay. Unorthodox but effective. I don't think there's anything else I can say. Really glad we listened to you on that one. Your instincts were bang on. That was one heck of a race out there, Callie. Well done and thank you from Maurizio. Uh, wanted to check your availability. Hey, Callie. As I said in my previous mail, the phone hasn't stopped. Photo shoots, interviews, advertising deals. Looks like your feet aren't going to be touching the ground anytime soon. As your agent, I'd always be keen to say yes to everything and never say no to an opportunity, but I don't think there are enough hours in the day. Give me a call when you're free. It's probably worth us having a chat about the kind of thing you want to fill your diary with. It might also be worth getting your mum on the call too. Evelyn's experience might ex really help Help us in deciding the route you want to take. I can't over uh, overstate how rare it is, Cal, to be in the position where it's you making all 
the choices. We've got a lot to talk about, Ben. Go, let's get straight into the action. Japanese Grand Prix, with only a handful of races remaining in the 2022 campaign, Connor Sport is still looking to make their mark on the sport during the first season as part of the F1 grid. So back with the team, boss. Hey, boss. Got another one for you. We missed some key sales in the past couple of Grand Prix due to merchandise, but demand is still high. Pre-orders for future stock are looking fantastic. Good. All right. Uh, we've got some news there. The outspoken Davidoff Butler. Oh, here we go. Davidoff? Connor, just uh, thought I'd call for catch-up. Wait, wait, wait. What time is it where you are? Doesn't matter. I wanted a report before the race. Ah, right. I did ask them to send across all the data to you. Perhaps they forgot. I'll make sure to... Um... No, 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 I've got it all here. Busy man, Andrea. I don't have time to read all that. How's it all look? Uh, the card is running well. Data solid. Whole team seems confident and based on the forecasts. We're sticking to the original tie strategy as we discussed. So we'll see. Good. And the boys? Keeping to themselves, so no fireworks. Aiden's been a little quiet, but that's usually a good sign before a race. And Devon's... Uh... I've already spoken to Devon. He's good to go. Oh. Right. Well, keep up the good work. Good luck. I'm sure we'll speak after. Okay, there's the r report on your desk. The short version, both cars are run with optimal levels. Based on our projections, we're in a good place, of course. Uh, we could always do more if we had more time, but we've worked this up to the wire. We'll keep a close eye on all the data, but I'm sure if we go with the tire strategy you're planning, the boys will be home in no time. Interview with Buff Butler. Uh, I mean, I'd heard some stories, but he's, is he like that all the time? No wonder Devon's like he is. I feel for you, Andreo. He seems like an absolute nightmare to work with, rather you than me. Best of luck at Suzuka. He was always one of my favourites. Team Dinner update, just to let you know that the Sakura have confirmed. They didn't know if they'd be able to fit the whole team in, but have decided to close both floors for the night. So we've got the whole place to ourselves. The owner really went out of his way to help us, so I'm sure the team will appreciate it and that your dad will love it. While on the subject of Antonio, I'm so pleased he's arrived safely and to think he's getting married, he's right. He did have some news. At 92, I guess you'd never... You're never too old. Make sure you wish him congratulations from me. Mark Priestley. Okay. Uh, weekend preview. There you go. Max Verstappen still leading the way. Of course. Here we go then. Oh, got another department event. Hey boss, got a couple of minutes. As is usual with the movie industry, there's a delay in production. So the final... Uh, so the filming will take place next season booked in for just after the spanish gp race weekend this clashes with a scheduled mid-season test davidoff uh, is keen we allow connor sport to get as much exposure as possible and stick to the filming we can't realistically commit to both what should we prioritize um yeah let's go for the film Japanese Grand Prix, a solid start to the race, sees Aiden on pace for one of his better performances behind the wheel of a Connor Sport car. Here we go. OK, mate, I need you to push before the pit window opens. Push, push. On we'll it. take Bonas before La Pace. Okay, so where are we? On lap five. Well, that's P8 at the moment. Okay, no sort of cutscenes in this one yet. We've got a little bit of overtake out the corner, try and get right in the gearbox of Sonoda here. And we go down the inside of 130R, no contact made. And we are through, Sonoda backed out of it, thankfully. Well, 
this is a great chance we got a better exit than Carlos Sainz and we are through with a little push of the overtake button he gives us a little push of his own that seemed a little bit malicious from Carlos there but now we are right behind Valtteri Bottas this is a good chance up in a 130R again and here we go again a little bit of overtake and the chance now to go down the inside of 130R for the second lap in a row and we are through Another pit stop here at Suzuka. This time it's Aidan Jackson coming in. He's been making steady progress today and Connor Sport need him to. They desperately need some results and they could do without this. And look, there's chaos in that garage. Absolutely, only three wheels on the car at the moment, Crofty. Aidan Jackson looks on in despair. Here comes that spare wheel now. That's a long, long time to wait. Just sat in the cockpit. What is going on down at Connor Sport? Well, the tyre is finally out of the garage and on the car, and Aidan Jackson's back out in the race, but it's a long time in the pit, and that will cost them dearly. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Objective updated. Reclaim eighth place. Of course it is. What was that? How many places did I lose? OK, try not to worry about that, Aidan. Just focus on the race, get your head down, and let's pull it back. Uh, I'm sick of this! Feel like that will be the final straw for Aiden Jackson. Oh, not good. Eight seconds behind Valtteri Bottas here. My chance on Pierre Gasly here into the hairpin. Yeah, nicely played. And now there's job, Lando nice Norris. Take not far ahead could it be another overtake into 130R could well be here we go round spoon a bit curb out of the exit and here we go then right in the gearbox now of Lando Norris I don't think we're going to have the momentum going into 130R okay, but push, push. Gaps the car behind. One point five we do have a chance down the inside and that's exactly what we go for terrific move from Aidan Jackson there and now DRS on Yuki Tsunoda and fastest lap of the race as uh, I think that's Carlos Sainz coming out of the pits and there is Valtteri Bottas not too far ahead so we're not that far behind at all from 8th place just a couple of seconds and definitely the fastest man out there right now. And here we go past Bottas then. A little touch of the overtake button around the outside. Oh, and a little love push again from Bonas in the exact same position Signs did. So it must just be that particular part of the track. Oh, well, we almost lost it there. Big slide and Valerie Bottas does have a lovely run at us possibly around the outside of 130R we hold it we give him space but he doesn't have the grip to do as well as we did and now here we go right behind Carlos Sainz DRS enabled and we are going to be back up into 8th position here we go goodness me Sainz broke early there you could see the difference between the AI and us and that's how we're going so much quicker than them all because they're breaking so damn early and now just 2.7 behind Devin Butler let's see how quickly we can catch up to him well, here we go what a chance on Devin Butler now as we pull to the outside DRS wide open and easily able to make it through a oh, little bit wide just come off the throttle a little bit to try and avoid the slide but three laps to go how high can we go ok 
Okay, here we go then with a chance on Ocon once again. Alright, we're coming across each other pretty much every Grand Prix at this stage. Nice exit out of there. Right in the slipstream, pull to the inside. And we give it a go again. Third time lucky down the inside of 130R and we've made that overtaking spot our own here. Now chasing after Lewis Hamilton. Final lap of this Grand Prix. You wouldn't say there's really any hope in hell of catching Lewis. So Max Verstappen has won here in Japan. And now we're going to come home in sixth place. We caught up a little bit to Lewis Hamilton, but uh, not enough to pass him. And here we come over the line then. And it's another strong finish for Aidan Jackson. Beautiful. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. Well, it's still too close to call at the top of the table. Meanwhile, at the other end, Ant, you can really understand Aidan Jackson's frustrations today. Yeah, they've had car problems all season long, Crofty. They've had a bad mix-up in the garage today. Connor Sport won't be proud of that one. And Connor Sport won't be proud of that. It's the longest pit stop we've had this season. Not the sort of record any team wants to set. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams. And they're certainly proving themselves. Okay, I don't really know why we get these uh, podium celebrations, but I never want to skip them just in case we get anything important but uh, there you go Max Verstappen wins Adrian Newey on the podium interestingly well Aidan I'm sure you already know what I'm going to ask that pit stop looked like a nightmare so what on earth happened today yeah well we know that every race has a hiccup so you could just never tell when it's going to happen. You just got to be ready and roll with the punches. I guess on the plus side, a mess up like that means that this mistake will never happen again. Well, there is a lot of talk on social media about whether Devon is actually getting preferential treatment by the team. So do you think, is there any truth to that? Or is it an unfair assumption? It's a good question. Davidoff Butler may be funding the team, but He's a good man. He, he works hard to make sure that everyone's equal. So, no, I don't think so. Well, Aidan, the list seems to get longer. Car reliability, you and Devon bumping wheels, and now issues in the pit lane. Huge mounting problems at Connor Sport. Has there been any talk at all about what the team might do next season, considering that you and Devon just don't seem to get along? Yeah, I've been thinking about next season. But who knows what the future will bring. At the moment, it's all about Connor Sport and bringing in as many points as I can. And finally, I've got to ask you about this. Rumours have recently emerged that you'll be playing a role in the next Throttle Zone film. Can you comment on this? <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited for it, and I can't wait to see what I'm going to be doing. They, they approached me um, for a part, and it sounds so, so fun. I can't wait for to start this opportunity. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, there we go then. Another uh, chapter in the book. So an old ti untimely pit stop error cost Aidan valuable time at the Japanese Grand Prix, which only serves to stoke his frustrations with the team at Connor Sport. Okay, let's have a look at the news. Stuck in the pits. Verstappen makes it two on the bounce. There you go, he wins the World Championship. Talk to me. About what? You saw the race, right? What is there to say? Thought you could do blowing off a little steam. <laughs> what is even the point in wasting any more energy? It's not the car, it's the team. It's not the team, it's the car. No one seems to care how much effort I'm putting into all of this. 
Which is why you need to double down. Listen, I promised I wouldn't say anything, but the top three are talking, Aiden. What? What? They've already reached out to us. Looks like there might be some last-minute negotiations on the cards, but keep that to yourself, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. No doubt there'll be some wrangling. You're contracted for another season, but your um, tenacity has been noticed. Wow, uh, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. You're not supposed to know. I hate to admit it, but Connor Sport can't keep up with you, Aiden. Just do me a favor, would you? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. What is it? I need you to push as hard as you can to get as much out of you before I lose you to a better team. Can you do that for me? Of course. No problem. You know I'm here whenever you need me. Speak soon. He's definitely winding us up, I think. Um, anyway, Aiden, I know I don't usually mail you directly, but after what happened today, I just want to apologise personally. The whole garage is so upset about what happened out there. Personally, I'm furious. Rest assured, we, we think we've isolated the problem. We'll be making sure this never happens again. Okay. A reminder on dealing with the press after what happened today, it's likely we're going to be getting a lot of press inf interest. So just a reminder that each head of department has the full guidelines on protocol and should brief their teams accordingly. Andrea will be releasing an official statement soon. I'd advise everyone to read it and not divert from that angle should they be approach. We realise that matters like this can get complicated. Okay. We missed out on the Nigel racing gloves. I know how much you wanted them, so I'm really sorry. In the end, it was down to just us and one of the bidder. I have no clue who it was, but no matter how high I went, they just kept pushing. All told, they went for five times the estimate, which was over double what you told me your comfortable, your comfortable ceiling. I'm sorry again. Rest assured, I'd keep my eyes open for similar things. Just watch the race. Ouch. Uh, hats off for keeping you cool and getting back into the race. You're a darn good driver. Those seconds must have felt like hours. You did yourself proud out there. Well done. Would you believe I nearly missed it? We're spending a week in the Costa del Sol. I never realised how hard it would be to find a bar that was showing the Grand Prix. Retirement life, eh? I've been sending you postcards too. I imagine they'll be waiting for you when you get back home. In a bit, Brian. <laughs> Let's get into the next chapter. Here we go. You saw it, right? The pit stop? How am I supposed to deal with that? I know, I want a chance to prove what I can do though. In a top tier seat, I deserve it. I've heard there might be interest. I just, I can't stay here. Okay, well, what would you do? So what advice did you give him? Well, I told him to try to stay calm, see out the season, and then go to the final team meeting. See if that changed his mind. And where were you at this point? Oh, I was uh, busy getting Cali ready for the final race of the F2 season. Okay, so the Abu Dhabi uh, final race of the F2 2022 season, having put together a number of impressive performances throughout the season, Cali Mayer finds herself within touch and distance of the Formula 2 championship at the season finale in Abu Dhabi. Let's have a look at our news. Can Cali do it? Okay. Here's Evelyn. I know why you're calling, but um, make it quick because I had to keep my head in the game. Of course, darling, but it wouldn't be right if I didn't call to wish you luck. Thanks, Mum, but luck really won't do anything. I need a clean strategy and just to keep my head, that's all. Look, which you do and you will. Just breathe, Cal, okay? You've already put the work in. Now all you need to do is get out there and do what you always do. Yeah? <sighs> yeah. You're right. Who knows? If you bring this one home, I may even call your father to gloat a little. <laughs> Mom, not now. <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to lighten the mood a bit. <laughs> I know. You'll be watching, right? Just try and stop me. Race fast, honey. 
Okay, all our hard work, all those sleepless nights have led to today. Thank you so much for everything you've put on the line this season. It's really paid off. Now let's breathe deep and make it happen. I can't wait to send a follow-up message congratulating you all. We're in this together. Kali, I just want to say that you are one of the greatest drivers I've ever worked with. You've come so far. I would wish you luck, but I know you don't like it, so have fun out there. The, only, the whole team is behind you. Do every act of your life as it were, as if it were your last. Now get out there and show them who's boss. Here we go. With only a few laps remaining, Cali sets her sights on the F2 Championship. The final race of the season now well underway here in Abu Dhabi. A few different drivers in contention for the F2 Championship. But here's the favourite, Cali Mayer. She's been so consistent this season, so fast. My money's on Mayer for the championship, no question. If she can finish high enough, the title belongs to her. OK, here we go, finish on the podium. How am I doing? It's looking good, Cali. Come on, a podium should clinch this for us. Then podium it is. Let's go. So where are we? We are ninth at the moment. I don't really know why, but uh, we are, and we've got what's that? Five laps to go after this one. Let's see how we can get on here. We've got DRS on Boshung here, but. Uh, not really closing in very fast. Let's see if we can get both objectives. Ooh, a little bit wide there. Absolutely no downforce in these cars, that's for sure. Here we go then, round the final corner. And five laps to go, there's Yuri Vips. He managed to overtake them. So up to eight as it stands, we're 6.1 seconds behind third place. Porsche. Wow, look at that, already six tenths of a second gained. It's in the braking zones that we're really making up that time. Another half second. She is just so much quicker than the other drivers in this championship. A little lifts, but still too wide. Onto the curbs we went there. A little touch of the curbs. Okay. The Ruvela faster slap as it stands. We have got four laps to go here. Well, look at this great chance on Hughes, and we are through straight away. DRS open and now closing in on Vesti. Desperately trying to stay in track limits this time. Three point one seconds behind Fittipaldi, who is in third place at the moment. We've got uh, Cordiel here. Ho oh, ho! And he allows us to get past there. That was awesome anticipation. And now there's uh, Theo Porsche as we come across, and that is a one forty point zero.
desperately trying to get faster slap as well here. That's tail push it. Just in front of us for now. And here we go. DRS activated. And we are through without any problems there. Warning for corner cutting there. Brendan Sergeant. Uh, Brendan. Logan Sergeant there now. And Fittipaldi in second as well. As we go down the inside of Logan Sergeant. And now he has Fittipaldi. We're going to go down the inside of him as well. And now Felipe Drugovic, who's leading the way. It's a. Uh, Don't currently have the data for that request. Oh, how annoying. I thought they might say first in the championship. But of course not, because it's all scripted anyway. Well, here we come around the final corner, a little bit wide. Well, actually, was our fastest lap of the race so far. So here we go then. Drugovic versus Mayer. Excellent exit there. DRS enabled and we are into the lead of this Grand Prix less than two laps to go and we should have it in the bag oh, Drogovic might try and come back at us here with DRS I don't think he can get close enough. So no. We are fine. Here we come then round the final corner and Kali Mayer is going to win the F2 Championship. Here she comes up to the line to win F2. Congratulations! You're the champion! And she's done it! Callie Mayer crosses the line to win the Formula 2 Championship in some style. Callie Mayer, get used to the name. She has her whole career ahead of her, and this is just the beginning. She's done it, as many predicted she would. A star is born. Callie Mayer becomes the first woman ever to win the F2 Championship. Historic. <laughs> well, I mean, someone had to be the first. But I just hope that this shows that talent can get you as far as money. And what about your dad? Has he called to congratulate you yet, Callie? Nope. Next question. Uh, Kelly, Kelly, what's it like being a woman in motorsports? We're sure everyone wants to know. <sighs> I don't know, John. What's it like being a man in journalism? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Hot-headed. <laughs> yes, for sure, for sure. But you know, that's, that's kind of what you need in a driver. Let's not forget that Callie taking the championship was a big deal. You know, for, well, for the sport, but really for everyone. And for you, how did you feel? It was one of the proudest moments of my career. It was the first time I mentored anyone. Yeah. I was a little sad to be moving on. So, had you already told Kelly about your new job? Yes, yes, of course. And I told her, you know, how I wished that I could take her with me. But she understood. And Aidan, had you told him? No. No, he was, uh, he was too busy. Busy? preparing to tell the team that he was leaving Connorsport. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. I know Aiden had something he wanted to say, but first, I have a matter I would like to address formally. It is no secret that I have been spread a little thin <laughs> this season. I mean, I own the team, I run the team. It's, it's a lot, okay? 
which is why I will be stepping away from the principal role next season. I'll still be pushing Connor Sport Racing to be the brand we know it can be, whilst the new principal will be laser focused on performance and results. And we have already found a man to step into that role. Casper. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Now, this is a big step up for me. I'm really looking forward to see what next season brings. It's truly an honor to be on board. I am sorry for the dramatic nature of the announcement, okay? Humor the man who pays you. <laughs> we all look forward to working with Casper, yes? Good. Then let us continue. Aiden, you had something you wanted to say? The floor is yours. Uh, no, it's, it's nothing. I just wanted to say, <clears throat> um, thank you, everybody, for all your hard work this year. And I'm really looking forward to next season, especially with Casper at the helm. Well, 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 wasn't expecting that, uh, gotta say, but uh, there you go, Bahrain Grand Prix, uh, three months later, uh, and uh, without further ado, let's get into Chapter 7, 2023, a fresh start, while the 2022 season exposed them to the harsh realities of life as a team on the F1 grid, Connor Sport Butler Global Racing team look set to bounce back with a newly invigorated team, now helmed by fan favourite and former driver, Casper Ackerman. Did Casper being around affect you going into the 23 season? I have bigger things going on than Casper. Do you have any regrets about 2023? Anything you'd have done differently? No. No, I'm in a good place now. Besides, what's to uh, regret about being the story of the season? Okay, so we are now Devin Butler. That's interesting. That's uh, very, very interesting, in fact. Okay, let's see what we can have a look at here. So we've got some news, trackside chats with uh, Kasper Ackerman. Ooh, we've got a call coming in from Daddy. Dad. Devin. How's business? Same as ever, having and firing. How's racing? Oh, you know, ducking and driving. You all prepared? Of course, I've uh, double-checked the strategy changes. I'm just going over my notes now. Everything's covered, just like always. Uh, they won't see me for dust. Spoken like a true butler. Just remember, we've uh, got a lot on the line this season. Yeah, yeah, I know. Dev, I'm serious. You're carrying this team, don't forget that. Yeah, well, uh, you keep signing these second-rate drivers. I, I can't do all the work. Just remember where we'd be. Where you'd be if this were all to go belly up. Just trust me, Dad. You, you, you've you got nothing to worry about. Devon. I mean it. If you don't bring your A-game, it's back to the bottom of the pile. Do you really want that? No. No, I don't. Just keep it in mind. Now go out there and show me what you can do. Already on it. I'll get you those points, Dad. Good boy. Speak later. <laughs> okay, here we go then. Uh, it's the first race of the season, and I'd like to congratulate everyone on working so hard to get us all here. A lot of the time, the public only see the thin end of the wedge. They only really take in what they see on race day, but it takes an army of you so we can roll our cars up to the grid and wait for lights out. Each and every one of you holds equal importance at Connor Sport, and for now, uh, it's only when we pull all together as one that we can show the world what we're made of. It's a 2023 season. Go and show them what we're made of. Brilliant. Uh, from one old driver, boys, I'm sending this to you separately, uh, away from the rest of the team. Not only do I know what it's like to be one out there, 
in the driving seat, but we've also got a history together, which means I know how good you both are behind that wheel. I'm expecting a lot from you both, but in return I will be behind you 100% and give you everything I can. Connor Sport had a rocky start, but this is a new season, a new start. Davidoff's birthday. Dev, remember it's Davidoff's birthday next month, the 23rd. What do you want to do? Do you have something in mind? Or shall we do the same as last year and I pick something based on whatever his PA says? Either way, I'm happy to pick anything up and make sure it's sent over to the house. He'll be out of the country until the 30th, according to his diary, so there's plenty of time. Also, I finally had a word with the builders about what happened to the car in the basement. It's not good news. I'm merely about that separately, as I think we should copy legal in. Okay. And there's our weekend preview. Okay, very good. Right, let's go to the race then. Here we go. First race of the season with confidence high. Devin Butler looks set to start the season strong at the Bahrain Grand Prix. It's race day. It's secure under the lights. And it's lovely to have you with us for the Bahrain Grand Prix. We go racing today around the 3.36 miles of the magnificent Bahrain International Circuit with 15 corners and two good passing opportunities into turns one and four. Keep an eye out for drivers locking the front left tyre into the tricky braking zone of turn 10. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Fernando Alonso, Russell, Perez, Hamilton, Sainz, Stroll, Ocon, Norris, Albon, Oscar Piastri, Jackson, Gasly, Sonoda, Bottas, Butler, Sargent, Joe, Magnussen, De Vries, Magnussen. And now it's time to head down to the track. 2023 Bahrain. We're about to get going and I hope you've enjoyed the build up just as much as we have. The teams are ready on the grid. They're ready in the garages too, but in the commentary box alongside me, are you ready, Ant? Of course I'm ready, Crofty. New season, new challenges for all of them out there, drivers and teams. I love this part of the year, Crofty. This is where it really kicks off and you get to showcase all that hard work you've done through the winter months. Does it pay off? Yeah, that's the question, isn't it? What does the 2023 season have in store for us? We're about to find out. Here we go then. OK, Devon, it's a brand new season. You know that. So let's start it as we mean to go on, OK? Okay, let's get out there. Come on. Okay. Um, well, the alternate strat. I mean, I think you probably want to go with that strategy. Let's see uh, if we can. Yeah, get off these uh, medium tyres early. They're not. Yeah, that looks good to me. Um. We can uh, fiddle with the setup a little bit, actually, which is quite nice. Okay, probably just leave it, but give ourselves a, a little bit more front wing. And here we go. Finishing the top five. From 17th. Okay, here we go, our first start of uh, the series. Lights out, away we go here in Bahrain for the 2023 season. It's a decent start off the grid for us. And, well, we're going to have to make sure that we're fairly careful going into the first corner. Well, we were sliding all around there. But we're okay. We're through. And now up to 13th position. Right, we've got 14 laps here. I'm guessing this is going to be down to us the whole race. It seems a bit daft to expect us to finish in the top five. We've clearly not got that standard of car. We're going to go down the inside of Aiden here. Oh, that's okay. It was a good move. Just made sure we gave him a little bit of extra space there. 
remember we're going to be on the soft tyres for the conclusion of this race which I think is going to really help us Albon comes over and defends quite vigorously we go down the inside a little bit of contact but we're okay it's a little bit aggressive but I probably wouldn't have went for that gap pad Albon not came all the way over Okay, let's uh, have a little look at the, the different camera angles. No visor cam. Something that's been requested since F1 2010, that. Still not out there, but uh, here we go. Closing in on Esteban Ocon. Might have a chance to go down the inside into turn one. And yet we are very confident on the brakes. Well, I tell you what, this uh, car is oversteery. That's for certain. And there goes Lando Norris. He's going to be having a little look at uh, Lance Stroll round the outside. Can we pick the old switcheroo? No. And a little bit of understeer there, probably caused by a little bit of turbulent air ahead, but. I'm going to think about going down the inside of Lance Stroll, uh, Lando Norris there, but didn't happen. Just sort of back out of it. Let's get a good exit here. That's exactly what we do. A little bit more juice given to the car. But yeah, we're not going to get through this time. But of course, DRS will be enabled next lap. Whoa, nearly lost it there. Just keep losing it in the high speed corners. And there goes Lando Norris. He's having a little look down the inside of Lance Stroll. We're going to stay back and try and get a better exit than both of them. Onto the main start finish straight. And here we go. Using a little bit of ERS. We're now three wide. Going past the start finish line. A little bit of ERS deployment. That'll take us towards turn one and we do try and break in a straight line but the rear just wants to overtake the front doesn't it and it's very very difficult to manage but we are through we're up to eighth place and now trying to close down the seven time world champion Lewis Hamilton and fingers crossed we'll be able to do that but a great start to this Grand Prix for Devon Butler Okay, you join me on lap five of this Grand Prix and we're closing in on Lewis Hamilton already. It's uh, It's been a, a pretty decent stint so far on these medium tyres and it does give me a lot of hope for when we're on those soft tyres and pumping in the laps towards the end of this Grand Prix. We should be within DRS range of Lewis Hamilton here. There we go, DRS enabled for the first time in this Grand Prix for us. Now we're just sort of in that DRS train really, aren't we? Now we are going to be coming into the pits next lap, so it is going to be worth pushing. Oh, but there you go, we spin out. I'm going to use a flashback for that. But... Um, just don't I don't get why the car is so rear heavy I mean front brake brake bias maybe we need a little bit more on the front to just stop it from throwing out maybe that's what it is but yeah I mean in our immersive driver career mode we won't be using the flashbacks I'll be turning them off right at the start okay, and, uh, well, if you haven't worked it out, I am playing through all of this before I even do the first race. Even though, when you watch this, you might have already watched quite a few episodes of uh, Career Mode. But uh, that was a good move on Lewis Hamilton, wasn't it? And I think that's a, an important move to make for this Grand Prix. And yeah, I'm much more confident on the brakes now that we've moved that brake bias forward. And now up to sixth place, and it's Sergio Perez 
That's the man in sixth at the moment. Uh, in fifth, sorry. In, and that is going to be the position we need to get to. Now, Max Verstappen absolutely dominating this Grand Prix as it stands. But are we going to be able to get up to perhaps second? Charles Leclerc is there at the moment. Could well be our ceiling, but we are coming into the pits this lap, and I haven't actually had a, a full pit stop on this game yet, so I'm intrigued to, to see how we get on here. Let's see as we come round the final corner. Others are coming into the pits as well. They are in very nicely. There we go. It's a lovely pit stop. Perfect job on the turn in there, mate. Looks like a nice stop time. We're happy with that one. That was right, let's see no more how we get on let's go. from here. Now, what I'm trying to do with these tyres is look after them a little bit. There's no point really catching up to this load of traffic too quickly. Let's just break these tyres in and hopefully they'll still be very nice by the end of the Grand Prix if I'm not too aggressive with them here at the start I'm going to lose Hamilton in the pit lane and Charles Leclerc is somebody that I feel like we need to Stay within all of this. So here we go. Aiden's coming in for his stop now. Come on past the pit lane entry. And there's Lewis Hamilton. So we are going to be a fair way ahead of these. Logan Sargent is there. That could have been awful. But luckily he backed out of it a little bit. That was far too aggressive, mate. Clean passes only. We don't want a penalty. And now we just sort of need to stay with Charles Leclerc. And there's Max Verstappen. He's caught in traffic here. This could be an opportunity for us. Just going to turn on the aggression a little bit because this is an opportunity to potentially win this Grand Prix. Going round the outside of Charles Leclerc, what a move that is! There's Nico Hulkenberg. And Max Verstappen inside line, we're going to try the switcheroo and we get a much better exit than both of them. And here we are, we're passing Max Verstappen for the lead of the Grand Prix as we set fastest lap of the race. Going to give Max Verstappen the lead into turn one so that we got the DRS out of turn two there we go a little bit of a DRS game there and Verstappen now down to third and Devon Butler leading the race and uh, well <laughs> you can call that realistic if you want won't change anything Well, you join me on the, the final lap of this race and, uh, well, it's it's been pretty dominant, to be honest with you. Uh, not the, the best chapter <laughs> we've ever had, I'll be honest. But uh, some good racing early on, but we come over the line and we win here in Bahrain. Surprises in the midfield. So where do we start, Ant? 
Well, I think we have to look at Connor Sport. And for me, they've been the biggest surprise so far. And Butler, he's doing fantastically well. The thing is, though, they've got to sustain that over the course of the whole season. And that is easier said than done. Certainly one Kasper Ackerman will be hoping that this season is better than his last. Well, what a thrilling end to an incredible Grand Prix weekend. Our top three finishers should be incredibly happy with what they were able to achieve out there today. There he is, Devon on the top step. What a start to the season, Devon. You must be happy with that performance. What do we put? Uh, hmm. Yeah, it just comes so naturally to me. I don't really think anything of it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not saying it wasn't impressive. I mean, you seem impressed. I'm, I'm sure others do too, and rightfully so. I'm just saying that it was actually pretty easy for me today. Well, you've had your share of run-ins in the past with teammate Aiden Jackson. Crucial question is, is that behind you? How do you feel about him right now? <sighs> Ah, listen, Aiden is the greatest F1 driver of all time. You ask him, he'll tell you. What, you, you think I've got an attitude problem? Aiden has got stealth ego, let me tell you. Uh, you, you don't know it's there, and then it emerges. He's, uh, well, he's, he's a handful, uh, trust me. Well, Connor Sport surprised everyone by appointing Kasper Ackerman as team principal this season. So how do you feel about taking orders from someone that you've got such a history with? I think he's going to do a terrific job, you know? Uh, mainly because he's got me on his team, so uh, he can't go too far wrong. Now, I'm sure he's incredibly thankful to have me as a driver. Well, you're embarking on a new year, but what would a successful season look like for you in 2023? I'm making it my personal mission to make a success of Connor Sport. And by the end of the season, you're all gonna be saying what a wonderful team we are and how great a season we've had. And if you're doing that, then I'll consider it a job well done. Appreciate it, thank you. He's such an idiot, isn't he? <laughs> oh, anyway, right, Paul Stray, Stevens starts the season in fantastic form with an impressive result for Connor Sport and Sakia. Great race out there today, just in the highlights. Listen, I know we've had our run-ins and, well, last season was last season. Connor Sport's got a real pass. Cast on board, new driving like that. Let's put the pass behind us. Fresh start for the team. What do you say? Oh, Jackson. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Bin's over there. Yeah. Nice one. How about the season just gone? The 2023 season was completely different for Connorsport. How so? Well, the car, for one. We'd ironed out the most critical issues and it was just starting to live up to its potential. Can we talk about what happened with Devon? Okay, what's going to happen with Devon? There you go, let's have a little look. Yeah, what is it? Now that's how a butler takes care of business. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Carrying the team, Devon, as well as the butler name. I couldn't be happier. Yeah, yeah, went well. Well? <laughs> I can't wait to hear what those clowns... Ackerman and Connor have to say. Yeah. Hmm? You okay, Devon? What? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm, uh, 
just adrenaline, Dad. I just, I really pushed it out there today, you know. I just need to simmer down a bit. Of course you do. Let's talk later. I'll be in meetings, but uh, call me whenever you like. I'm proud of you, son. Let's just make sure today's result isn't just a one-off. Eh? Yeah. All right, all right. Ciao. Okay, uh, Casper, I am humbled. I knew Connor Sport were good, but that was something else. I'll have much more to say in the debrief answer. Each department in turn, but we are firing on all cylinders. Keep it up. This is only the beginning. Oh, come on now. Boys, could you slow down a little next time? Still settling in and couldn't keep up. Seriously, thank you. I've got a lot of people looking over my shoulder now. And you both just made... Um, my life so much easier. I couldn't be prouder. I knew some phenomenal talent out there on show. Well, I saw some. I knew we'd make a great team. I'll see you both at the debrief. Uh, an update on the car issue. Looks like I'm going to have to get legally involved. After all, the insurance are happy to pay the claim for the damage for the to the bodywork, and there's a specialist over in Barnes willing to take it on. Uh, it'll take a few months, but we can at least get it sorted. I need a decision on what we do with the builder, though. Uh, I've spoken to him again. He clearly feels really guilty about the whole thing. I also found out exactly how it happened. Would you believe that he decided to hop into the driver's seat and pretend to be a racing car driver? He said he couldn't resist. His face was bright red when he was telling me. The irony is uh, he didn't know who you were. It's when he got out that he uh, prang the door it's one heck of a dent he does seem like a really nice guy and it's clearly a big job for him so I just need to know if you're happy for him to continue let me know what you think okay yeah the way he was acting at the end of last episode but uh, let's go to the next chapter and see if we can get to the bottom of it so Australian Grand Prix several weeks later a strong start of the season for Connor Sport has seen uh, the team in high spirits as the paddock heads to Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix so back with Devon again got some news there we got Cali Mayer there Ackerman works his magic a classic remodelled but that was 2022 ok nothing social there I don't really like the social stuff, but if you guys want to read it, feel free to have a little look. Um, email. Can you come down to the garage early? In and Devon, everything's run perfectly, but we've had to make some last-minute tweaks to the transmission. Should squeeze a little more performance, but I'd love you to down in the garage so I can go through it with you. Let's keep it up, boys. We've had a great start of the season, but now is always the risky part. Let's keep the energy up. Okay. Uh, Yarra Valley booked Dev, the Yarra Valley private tour is booked and confirmed I've put the details in your diary but you'll be picked up from the hotel at 8am on Monday don't be late for this one, it's a full day uh, and there's a lot going on please don't leave everyone waiting this time Nigel Mantle's driving gloves have finally arrived oh it was Devin that bought them the auction house were extremely apologetic about the delay. I forgot that auction even happened. It was so long ago. I'm not sure where you want me to put them, and I have a sneaking suspicion that you may not care. Perhaps somewhere on shore, down in the basement. Honestly, I still think it was an incredible amount of money to spend just to annoy someone. Call me when you can, K. One more thing. I almost forgot. I've had two calls now from a private clinic. Mention something about an appointment you booked but won't talk to me about it. Do you know anything about this? And if so, can you call them? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Go to race. I'm glad this one's mid-race. A solid performance in qualifying has the team in a good position at the Australian Grand Prix. Here comes Butler, good pace here down the straight. Into the corner we go, that's a little too late and he nearly goes off the track on the exit. And is that a lapse in concentration? I think just a little bit of desperate driving there, Crofty. He's pushing way too hard. I mean, there's nobody else around him at this stage. Okay, Devon, we're gonna have to ease off from the brakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Brakes don't feel right. Okay, we'll have a look at it, but you're gonna see a drop off in performance, I'm afraid. What? Why? 
We've asked you to take it easy on the last lap, but pushing has made the issue even worse. So we're just going to have to live with it for now. What are you talking about? Listen, just do what you can, please, Devon. Come on. Okay, here we go. Hold on to as many positions as you can. Use your overtake button more. It's time to utilize some of this energy. Come on. How many laps we got? We got six laps. Our bonuses finish ahead of Jackson. Well, there's Carlos Sainz. He's going to be straight back past. Can we put down the inside of him here? Oh, we're through. Just about. Gasly's back through as well. But yeah, the car feels really weird. I assume they've given us the sort of simulation that their front wing's broken. You're in the top ten now. Keep Gasly up. sets fastest lap of the race. Oh my god. Well, we barge signs off the track essentially there. Well, Aiden Jackson is there as well. It's going to be almost impossible. I feel. There's Carlos signs back Try through. But we stay ahead for now. comes again but we hold them off nicely okay that's us with five laps of fuel remaining five laps of fuel left. so four laps to go here there goes Carlos signs again though around the outside we're taking defensive action here we're just about holding on for now Signs this time has the inside line. We're going to give him room, but we've got the inside line of the next corner, and he has to back out of it. This is pretty ridiculous, isn't it? There he comes again. Can we hang on for another lap and a half? That's a question. Got the inside line here. And once again, we managed to go down the inside and hold the position. Oh, we hit a little bit of gravel there. That's not going to help. Here we go then. Final lap of the race is coming up. Okay, we take the inside final line. Signs tries around the outside. Can't get anywhere. Piastri's down up into 11th place. That's surely going to help us. And hopefully we're going to be able to stay in this top 10 that's been a good first sector we 
Oh, well, Gasly's gone on and gone past uh, Ocon now. He's up to seventh. He's been very, very fast, hasn't he? But I think we're all good now. I don't think Piastri's going to be able to, fa uh, f to catch us. So coming around this final sector, bit too much kerb there. Allows Piastri to close in a little bit, but I think we're good, you know. I think we're very good. We come round the final couple of corners then. And it's going to be 10th place for Devin Butler over the line. That is an awesome result in the end. And there we go. We've done it. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. Look, this isn't the first time we've seen Devon Butler go rogue, but the question is, what are Connor Sport going to do about it? Well, it's really hard. As we've seen so many times before, Crofty, in the past, so hard to control your drivers. In a way, they're their own entity, but on the top of it, they're, they're working for the team, and that's what you want. It's a very hard situation to manage. And working for the team, Kasper Ackerman wanted to make a clean break for this year. This does feel, though, that it's something that they might have had to have dealt with last season. It's really not what they wanted. A repeat of what happened in the past, and you cannot let it go on. It can't continue. They're just damaging the reputation of the team and their own reputation as well. They have to sort it out. I'm sure they'll be having words. So it's all changed here in Australia, and as the teams are climatized to their new standings, so will we. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently, and it's clear to see that they've put in the work, and they should be so proud of the victory they secured here. Well, there we go. Now we got a Paul Strace interview. Now, Devon, you didn't respond to the team order today. In Hungary last season, you said it was a comms issue, but Connor Sport claimed they didn't know what that issue was. So, are they hiding something? What's really going on here? Look, anything I say is going to be taken out of context. So I'd rather not fuel that kind of speculation. I'll debrief the team and we'll figure out how we can stop it happening again. That's, that's all there is to it. Devon, you finished the race with a compromised car today. What was that like for you? Yeah, it was tough. Tough out there. I mean, uh, I love this track. You know, I know I can do well here. And it's frustrating to deal with anything that slows me down. You know, I didn't like it and the team didn't like it. Now, some have been saying that you do get preferential treatment because your father funds the team. What do you say to those allegations? That always strikes me as really odd, like as if <laughs> the only reason that I'm fast on the track is because my dad funds the team. You know, how, how is that an explanation? It's ridiculous. So how do you expect Connor Sport to perform this season based on your performance so far? I expect us to win the whole thing, Natalie. You know, people talk about Mercedes and Red Bull, but people are in for quite a shock this time around because Connor Sport will be top of the constructors by the end of the season. You mark my words. You heard it here first. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for chatting with us. Great to have you. Oh, he's a pillar, giddy. Uh, but you got to love Devon. Right, Australian Grand Prix Pro Race. Uh, a promising start turned into a difficult end with Devon having to finish with a compromised car. So we're now with Casper. Could you take a look at this, please? The producers of Throttle Zone have been in touch. They are now seeking permission to film inside the Connor Sport garage for the upcoming Throttle Zone scenes. They'll need a full run of the garage while they film. Their engineering department are also scheduled to have the garage on those same days to run tests. Um, Andrea agreed to film him. We should honour that. That's fine. 
While some teams had to put in overtime to make it work, it looks like the early returns on this year's car proved they were able to make the strides during development last year's mid-season upgrades. Also turned out to reduce required development of certain components this year, so it was a worthwhile exercise. There's been some positive press attention surrounding our savvy decision-making last year. Okay, De- Devon refused to comment on what happened. I don't care if it fuels more speculation, we can't comment until we get to the bottom of it, yeah. Fair enough. Okay, so we're done with uh, that now. That's fine. The case of the missing team order. Oh, here we go. You nip this in the bud, Cass. Do you hear me? Andreo. Butler, what was that out there today? I will not have a return to last season. We are a team. He cannot be allowed to do just what he wants. They've just calmed down. I have it under control. Well, this is Devon we're talking about. There is no control. He nearly lost the car, Casper. But he didn't. You know what it gets like out there. I'm sure there's an explanation. Or an excuse. And we'll find out. I'll be raising it at the debrief, okay? So I'll report back to you. Uh, okay, um... Hang on. Look, I've got to go. I've got David off on the other line. Of course you have. Enjoy. Okay, Casper, we've just run a file a diagnostics check on Devon's car. Won't go into everything here. But it's not quite as bad as we feared. Should be good to go in no time. Let's talk about it next time you're in the garage. Uh, Davidoff Butler, call me as soon as you get this. We need to discuss the party line with regard to what happened out there. We all know that certain things will always be temperamental come race day. I will not have the finger pointed at Devon for this one. Drama. Hey, Cass. Saw the race. Uh, hope there's not much drama to deal with, but then I guess there always is. Lily's still cheering for Aiden. I'm still cheering for you. Hang in there. Without further ado, let's get into the next chapter. I'm uh, curious as to what's going to happen to Devon Butler. Oh, it's a well, it's a big deal when one of your drivers decides to do their own thing. So I called him out on it at the next team meeting. And what was Devon's reaction? Well, he denied the whole thing. You know, blamed it on a comms fail. Which I thought was strange. The same thing happened the year before when I was principal, and he gave the exact same excuse. Okay, Amelia Romagna Grand Prix with two races in. Uh, as many years now impacted by communication issues involving Devon, Connor Sport Management have started to ask questions as the grid heads to Imola. Casper looks for clarity from his driver. Yeah? He wanted to see me. Ah, there he is. You're a difficult man to pin down. Right, I'll cut uh, right to the chase, Devon. Tell me what's happening. What are you talking about? Well, it's not just disregarding team orders. Paddock talks, people are saying you've been distracted, that you're ignoring them completely. <laughs> now, my job is to make sure the team works smoothly, like clockwork, so I'm just trying to work out what's going on. I told you, check the comms. Yeah, the comms are fine, Devon. We checked. What's going on? Nothing. Just cut that out. Show me some respect now. I heard the order. All right? You happy? Why ignore it? I'm feeling it, Cass. The pressure, paddock gossip these last couple of months. Oh, come on. You're Devon Butler. You are the paddock gossip. <laughs> You've heard what they're saying, right? You've seen what they're writing. Driving on daddy's money. It's, uh, it's making me second guess myself. Okay. We can work through that. Start changing the the team narrative. Absolutely. But in the meantime, I'd like you to see someone from the medical team. Just to be sure. I've booked you in for this afternoon. No, 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 Cass, Cass. Look, I, I've got a race to prep for, okay? I need my head in the game. 
I'm fine. I get that. That's fine. But I want you to see them straight after the race. Understood? Yeah. Fine. Hmm. Okay. Right, back with Devon then. So news, we've got a family affair behind the scenes. Connor Sports Melbourne mishap. The home of Ferrari, Imola's heritage. Okay, socials. Can have a little look at all of that if you fancy. Let's have a little read of the email. Oops, of the emails. Here we go. So, interview. Hey, Devin, we know there's a lot of focus on in the press right now after Melbourne. We're working to stem the tide, but we thought maybe we could arrange an interview for you. You have a knack of spinning stories. Okay. Thanks for our chat earlier. I appreciate your honesty. My door is always open. I know how. I know you like to deal with things on your own terms, but I'm here to help. Just say the word. Medical confirmation, just a quick email confirming your medical checkup at Casper's request. If you could head over after the race, they'll be ready to see you. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, the weather conditions. Looks okay. Right, into the race. So, feeling the pressure mount, Devon hopes a strong performance will divert the team's attention from any concerns about his health. Fine. Fine. Just leave me to it, yeah? Okay. So I've got to finish the race here. We are 16th as it stands. Whoops. So a little bit too deep there. But yeah, let's see if we can get past Piastri and Court. But look at that. I mean, we've got eight laps to do this. This, this is the type of uh, part of the, part of the breaking point that I really don't like and don't enjoy because I've I've got to race eight laps here and just finish the race. I've got no other objective than that. Um, so I'm hoping that there will be another cutscene at some point. But we shall see. Down the inside of Piastri, that was a good move. Good job, nice overtake. This could be a chance on uh, Logan Sargent. Had to come out of it a little bit there. So we right on his gearbox, but we are through. Up to 14th now. And yes, Hulkenberg. Past him as well. Beautiful. Whoa, well. Almost managed to get back past there. They just seem to have so much more straight line speed than us there initially. But um, we'll be okay, I'm sure. Three seconds. Okay, going to have a great chance on Kevin Magnussen here with the DRS. through very nice oh here we go
Devin Butler now. Oh, that's not good. Oh, no. Devin Butler spins. He's out. Oh, he just misjudges it and clips the curb. What a mess. Devin Butler, with that move, is out of the race. He won't want to see that too many times. We want to see him out of the car, though. That's good news. Big relief there. Although he does still look a bit unsteady on his feet, Crofty. Well, thumbs up to the crowd, but I'd imagine after that, he'll be quite shaken. Hey. It's okay. It's okay. It was his hearing. He'd been keeping it from us. I think maybe he'd been trying to keep it from himself. I mean, he was at the height of his career. Yeah. What can you say? How did you feel? I, I was devastated. <sighs> but, uh... Five years in F1. Can't argue with that. I mean, most people never even get the chance, so. And I was still one of the best while I was out there. You ask anyone. How did you feel when Devon left? How did I feel? Wow. Okay. The Butler Estate, the UK, ready for uh, Chapter 10. But um, there you go. Devon retires from Formula 1. I, I, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, that is fair to say. So I'm intrigued to see what's going to be happening now. With Devon's sudden retirement, the team at Connor Sport are forced to scramble in an attempt to find a driver who can replace his performance on track. But if we are going to hit our targets, we need another driver, a permanent one, and fast. But we are mid-season. It's impossible. So given the circumstances, do you think you can grant us a bit of leeway on the contract? I have the projections. If Connorsport doesn't reach fifth place in the constructors this season, the returns simply aren't worth my time. That was always the deal. And it still is. But with a little extra time, perhaps we stop. The deal stands. And without Devon driving, there's now little of interest for me beyond the contract. It's just business. There must be something we can do. So, legacy is obviously important to you, Davidoff. As a father, I, I totally get that. So if Devon, your son, can't drive, how about your daughter? Why don't we give the seat to Kelly? No. California will not be signed to Connorsport. Why not? Just... Just think of the commercial opportunities for the team that signs her, hmm? Forget legacy. Oh, <laughs> we'd be... You'd be making history. And you'll be giving a phenomenal talent her first break into F1. It's the right thing to do. You know she deserves it. The daughter who took her mother's name to spite me. Nah, she'll never say yes. Why don't you leave that to me? <sighs> Contract still stands, Ackerman. Fifth place, or I'm out next season. One problem at a time, eh?
Well, I didn't expect Callie to be uh, his son, uh, his daughter. <laughs> uh, she's definitely not his son, i put it that way. Um, Spanish Grand Prix, several weeks later, the F1 calendar waits for no one. While Casper and Andrea work to secure a permanent replacement, the team must turn its attention to the Spanish Grand Prix. So here we go then. Let's have a little look hey, on what we we're expecting. Your on this one. So the engineering department are annoyed that you're allowed to let the throttle zone uh, film crew take over the garage. It's going to make their job in the garage much more difficult. They can do some testing with no other reserve driver, but they want to know if they can adjust today's race strategy to get a head start on gathering specific data. Um... Yeah, let's agree to that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, right, let's have a look then. We've got news. So what really happened to Devon? Uh, let's read this one. The room... Oh, well, let's listen to this call. Andreo, have you spoken to her yet? Uh, yes, we've spoken. And what did you say? She'll be around this weekend. She agreed to come and see me. You mean you haven't asked her yet? Of course not. It's a delicate situation. Uh, I'm sure she has an idea, but... Uh, look, it's not just something you casually ask over the phone, is it? Why not? Come on. This is potentially life-changing for her. And the whole family situation needs to be handled with a little, you know, care and respect. Well, when you're the one that knows her, just make sure she says yes and fast. I'm finding it difficult to keep fielding questions about the future of Connesport. Yeah, I read part of that interview. Could almost feel you squirm. That bad, huh? Worse. Look, I'll call you as soon as I know. Okay, so... Um, we've got Noah Bell starting his second Grand Prix. Um... Some say infighting with his father became too much to bear, and others have perhaps more realistically speculated on a potential medical condition. Whatever the case, we're sure to find out the truth before long and hope to see the indomitable uh, Devon Butler back in the driving seat soon. I don't think he will be, though. Trackside chats. Okay... Devon remains on the team. He's seeking treatment for medical issues that we're not got at liberty to discuss. Okay. That's up to Devon. Okay. Right, a brief guide to the mid-season driver swaps. Um, Red Bull made quite the name for themselves when it came to swapping drivers. Liotti and Clean sharing the second seat. Kvyat for Verstappen. A decision that looks positively prophetic with hindsight. And Gasly out, Albon in. Renault made the most. Uh, Carlos Sainz replacing Palmer. Okay, fair enough. Right. Uh, socials. Quick look at all of those. Okay. Uh, emails, what we got, I, I'll head on over, I'm already here, landed and just arrived, and then I'll head straight over to Connor Sport, really looking forward to seeing you and catching up, I've got so much to tell you, also intrigued at why you couldn't talk on the phone and you said you needed to see me, you'd better not be up to something. Okay, they published the trackside chats interview I did, It'd be great if you can keep on top of anything Devon related, even the smallest contradiction could lead to speculation. Okay, Callie. Callie called. Yes, yeah, she does suspect you're going to offer her the seat. I said I couldn't possibly comment, which I guess is as good as confirming it. She's going to find out after the race anyway. It's so wonderful you're offering her the seat. It'd be so good for the sport. Right, uh, let's go to the race then. Here we go. Uh, race day. Uh, race from the team's reserve driver. Connor Sport looked to Aiden uh, Jackson to help the team afloat in the standings uh, with a more permanent replacement for Devon being arranged.
Welcome along, everyone, to sunny Spain, specifically to the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. So many great moments in Formula One history have been written at this very track over the years, including Michael Schumacher's first win for Ferrari back in 96. That win was in the rain. We might have better weather here today, but we're just as overjoyed to be at the Spanish Grand Prix. It's an updated track at Catalonia, and the popular opinion in the paddock is that we never wanted the chicane in the first place. That's now been gone, the final corner is much faster, and at 2.9 miles and 14 turns, we await the Spanish Grand Prix. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. Edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Russell, Norris, Hamilton, Gasly, Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Joe, Sargent, Bottas, Magnussen, Ocon, Hulkenberg, De Vries, Jackson, Stroll, Albon, Stroll. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. Welcome to the wonderful Catalonia. It's time for the Spanish Grand Prix this weekend. And whilst the season is just a few races old, it's already been one full of drama. So, Natalie Pinkham, who have you got your eye on this weekend? Well, in Formula One, naturally, the conversation is drawn towards those at the top of the standings, both drivers and teams. But I'm really intrigued by the midfield team of Connor Sport. Devon Butler's absence will definitely be felt. There's no doubt about that, both on and off the track. For me, the interesting thing will be how they move forward without him. Indeed, almost as many battles off the track as there are on it for Connor Sport at the moment. And Kasper Ackerman and his team certainly have their work cut out for them this weekend. Okay. I know it's been a mad few weeks, mate, but you've always gone well here. So let's get your head down and see what we can do. Come on. Let's see how we get on. We're starting on uh, the soft tyres, then onto the mediums, and it's uh, going to be a long one, so let's get into the action. Primary objective, try and secure as many points as possible. All right, here we go. Lights out, so where we go here. In Spain, again, it's a very good start off the grid. And, uh, well, we're going to be taking the grass slightly here. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. Well, we had to back out of that and we'll have to, to rebuild. But uh, Ocon came right across us there. And that could have been an airplane crash. But we managed to stay with the car pointing forward. And hopefully we'll be able to, to build back into this Grand Prix but uh, Nick De Vries just cutting off the inside line there uh, but now a possible chance to go down the inside and yes we've managed there that's a good move and now Hulkenberg down the inside of Esteban Ocon and now we get the move on Hulkenberg and force him wide and he's now going to be Defending from Nick De Vries. Just come down to towards the final sector now. Here we go. We're going to go through the wide sweeping final corner. We've got an excellent run on Esteban Ocon here as we end the first lap. And there is Logan Sargent now. I'm going to go down the inside of him as well. Very good. And now there's Kevin Magnussen. Straight away we're looking. Pretty nice here. Chance on Magnussen here. Bit of an unorthodox place to get past, but we've managed it. 
A little bit of oversteer on the exit, but we're all good. Car's feeling really nice here. And here we go, potentially around the outside of Valtteri Bottas here. And we are through. Down the inside of Zhou Guan Yu, perfectly through there. Very, very good. Now Yugi Sonoda, and we are up to P11 now. Very good, and now chasing after Oscar Piastri, Fernando Alonso, and whoa, Pierre Gasly, I believe. Nearly lost it in that final couple of corners, and well, Yuki Sonoda is going to have a, a nice little run on us here with the DRS, but doesn't look like he's going to be able to make that move stick. So P11 at the moment. And down the inside of Oscar Piastri we go. And now we are into the top 10. Brilliant. Go on, Fernando Alonso. Great opportunity. And we are through. That was brilliant. And now we should be able to give it our all in this lap and get near fastest lap here. Our gap to the car in front is 1.8 seconds. That's the slap of the race. We'll settle for that. 17-7 there. Okay, we're coming into the pits this lap, so got to make sure we make a good pit entry. But actually, with Norris coming in as well, we're going to try and overcut. So here we go, we're overcutting, lost a little bit of time in that final corner, it was just, there was so many people coming into the pits, I think it would have been too busy for us there, so what we're trying to do is hold ourselves together. Here we come into the pit lane then. We're in. And here we come into the pit lane. Noah is in the pits now. Pit strategy complete. See these tyres through to the end now. That has got us out just behind Lando Norris. We kind of expected that might happen, but we do have fresher tyres than him now, so should be able to push on till the end of the race at this point. that we go right down the inside there of Lando Norris that was a brilliant manoeuvre and we now give ourselves a great chance to get onto the podium today well, look at 
this one now, right behind Lewis Hamilton. On track. This could be very much be the moment. Look at this. As we go fastest of anybody. Go around the outside of Lewis Hamilton. Nice work, mate. That brings you up. We are through. And these fresher tyres definitely doing the trick. Well, here we go. This could be a chance on George Russell. down the inside little lock up but we're okay we are through that's an excellent manoeuvre five laps of fuel remaining four laps to go in this Grand Prix well here we come on to the final lap okay, of the race the then Charles Leclerc really, really struggling and Carlos Sainz is going to make a move on him. He goes down the inside. This is going to be very close between the two Ferrari teammates. And Leclerc stays in front for now. But can we get through and maybe up in the second place? I don't, I'm not sure. That was a very, very good first sector. All going to be on this middle sector. Our tyres are screaming for mercy. As are the soft tyres of the Ferrari in front. Need to get past one of them very, very quickly here. But I'm not sure we're going to manage it. Carlos Sainz is going to have a little look at his teammates. But can't make it happen. Look how close we are though. Oh, a little bit wide, a little wobble of the steering wheel. George Russell's in there as well. And here we go, we try and hold it flat round the final couple of corners. It's Max Verstappen who of course wins the Grand Prix. It's gonna be Leclerc over the line in second, signs in third, and we finish okay, fourth. Up, that was very, very cool that uh, racing towards the end there. So it's Aidan Jackson propping up Connor Sport here today, but the big news off the track is the speculation about this team and whether or not they'll see out the season with their current lineup. Well, I think they'll have to sign a new driver, Crofty. It's a gamble worth taking. Well, a mid-season signing would get us all talking, I'm sure, but time will tell. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams. And they're certainly proving themselves. Okay, post race interview with Aidan Jackson. Well, Cotter Sport are in a bit of an odd situation right now. So just tell me, what is it like for you today? Uh, yeah, well, you know, that side of things, that's not really my job. I, I wish Devon well, but uh, it doesn't really matter to me who the other driver is. So I'm out there to drive the car as best as I can. And that's all there is to it. Everything else is for Casper and the team to worry about. Most importantly, how is Devon? And how are you finding it without your teammate? Uh, um, yeah, I know as much as everybody else. So, you know, I saw what happened. I'm obviously very worried for him and as is everybody else. And, you know, I know he's not fit to drive for us right now. As far as I know, he's working super hard to return to the sport. And, um, yeah, I wish him well. Well, there's a lot of talk about what happens if Devon doesn't return. Would Connor Sport be looking for a new driver, do you think? It's not for me to say, but 
I think it could be a real opportunity for the team to make an exciting signing. Uh, there's a lot of talent out there hungry for a shot in F1, and Connor Sport could find themselves in the perfect position to offer them one. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, it's Spanish Grand Prix Paul Strace with the Spanish Grand Prix in the books. Connor Sports set their sights on securing their driver lineup for the remainder of the 2023 season. Okay, let's have a little look. So Connor Sports replacement reserves to the rescue. Hey, Casper, you wanted to speak to me? Yes, I did. Shoot. Uh, nothing major, really. Um, to be honest, I just wanted to thank you. What for? I'm, you know, just doing my job. No, it's more than that. Uh, well, I know why you stayed on the team. And, uh, well, I won't lie to you, it, it's not been easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can say that again. Yeah, but you really stepped up. It's good for me to know that I've got someone like you to rely on. Always. Yeah. Look, Aiden, I'll warn you, things may not get any easier, at least not for a while, but, um... Well, we've got something in the pipeline. A potential new driver and a damn good one. Who is it? <laughs> I can't say. Not, not yet. It's a bit of a gamble. But if they agree, we could have something special. Nice. And, um... How is Devon? Fine. I think... Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, Davidoff has closed the door on that one, but... Yeah, he tells me Devon is in a good place, though. That's good, that's good. Just you know, keep doing what you're doing, okay? And now, just get out of here. Of course. I'll catch you later, Casper. Okay, so, Casper, this remains against my better judgment, but you and Andrea seem convinced that this is the right direction for the team. Let me know the second you've spoken to her. I want updates. Um, well done, update soon. Okay, he won't be joining us again this season. All right. As per our call, you'll find the full production schedule attached. There's nothing in there that we haven't discussed. Okay. Are you going to be around on the shoot day? Let me know and maybe we can grab a coffee. And that's the um, production company, yeah. Okay. Following on from our earlier discussion, I don't think you need to worry too much. The engineering department's still upset about losing valuable garage time. Okay, Davidoff has been in touch. One minute he's saying Callie's the right choice, the next he's saying she's a risk. If I didn't know him better, I'd say he's panicking. Okay. All right, we've got some uh, stuff hey, for Casper. Aiden has been approached to help promote an F1 sim racing event. Uh, he's agreed to take part without consulting us first. Uh, should we let him attend? Yes, it's annoying he didn't talk. It's not ideal, but let's see if we can agree for him to attend over video. He can keep his commitments. Mm, no, let's uh, agree to that. That's fine by me. Okay, Why here we hesitating? go. You've always dreamt of racing in F1. Not like this. Do you know what he did? Oh, your father? He refused to support me. Said he'd only fund one of his children. Said Devon had better prospects. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Mum used the divorce settlement to help me out, but... And you're only here because he sent you. No. This was my idea, my decision. And this is me asking you, Callie, not your father. We need a replacement and ask for you because I know how good you are. And that's the truth. I always said I'd do it on my terms, not his. I'll look out for you, just like I did in F2. Will you keep him away from me? I'll do everything in my power, everything, to make sure that all you have to think about is driving. Have we got a deal?
might never get this opportunity again. You know that. Okay, the Azerbaijan Grand Prix several weeks later with current F2 champion now on board, Kasper and their team at Connorsport hope that stability on the roster will help garner the results needed to keep pace in the competitive midfield of the F1 grid. Okay, here we are, back with Kasper again. Could you take a look at this, please? One of our sponsors has unexpectedly paid a bonus. There are a number of ways we can use this money. The question is, where should we invest it? I think team. Yeah, let's go team. Okay, let's look at news. Davidoff. They stopped me entering the garage. Just because Callie's in there. It's ridiculous. We've had this conversation. You need to give her space. I'll humor you for now, but I don't like being told where I can and can't go around here. Don't forget, you talked me into this. What does that mean? Talked you into what? Signing Callie in the first place. I'm just allowing you to take credit for it, that's all. Yeah, it sounds like you're trying to blame me. Well, if you're right about it, there'll be no blame to allocate, will there? Anything else? You're a busy man. I'll let you go. Okay. Hey, Casper. Just want to follow on from our meeting yesterday. We've had another 14 individual requests for interview with Cali. Uh, it looks like everyone's desperate for their own take. In all my years in PR, I've never seen anything like it. I've communicated to the rest of my team your concerns about protecting Cali from as much of this as we can while managing our mandatory commitment. Hey, honey, couldn't uh, get through on the phone, so listen, despite my best efforts to, or not to, I'm meeting up with Evelyn for lunch. Turns out she can be pretty convincing when she wants to be like mother, like daughter, I guess. Uh, I just read the trackside interview. By the way, I don't know what you were so worried about. You came across really well, although come to think of it, it was my idea for you to mentor her in the first place. I should really be interviewing me. Or wasn't it, uh, should I say. Uh, headline could be something like Zoe Ackerman is quietly changing the face of F1. What do you think? I'll suggest it to Evelyn when we meet. Maybe she'll have thoughts. That's a wrap. Casper, a big thank you from all of us as Longshard Productions for your help with shooting. Filming continues elsewhere for us, but that's a wrap from your side. Please pass on the best to everyone at Connor Sport. And a big thank you to Andrea for agreeing to do it in the first place. It's a great way. Uh, that we've been able to work together. Do please emphasise how sorry we are to Davidoff for dropping that lamp on his foot. <laughs> it can get pretty crowded uh, on set sometimes. I hope he understands. We can't wait for you to see the film. We'll sort you out tickets for the premiere. Would be uh, great to have you there. Uh, Mark Priestley, weekend preview. Hey boss, so Kelly's first race is finally here. The team ha in the garage can't wait to see what she can do with the car. Okay. Let's just have a quick look at the weekend preview. There you go, Max Verstappen leading the way. Let's get into the race. Here we go. Another department event. Hey, we need your input. The filming for the latest throttle zone was a success and the early buzz has certainly paid off. We've already been receiving media. Request to speak to Aiden closer to the film's schedule release date. So I wonder, how do we pick Devon um, to do that? Whether he'd have had to pull out? Hmm, interesting. So race day with the world watching, Car Callie looks to make history as she approaches her first start behind the wheel of an F1 car. History is made here today as Callie Mayer, Connor Sport's latest signing, becomes the first female driver of the modern era to participate in an F1 race. What a moment. I've got goosebumps. Now, for those of you wondering at home, only a handful of women have entered at least one Grand Prix over the years, but none have even had the opportunity to qualify since 1992. Italy's Giovanna Amati, for those of you wondering. So today is very much a new dawn here in Baku. And Maya was impressive in qualifying. So let's see what the Grand Prix has in store for her. 
Yeah, I have to say, it is quite a tight-knit pack out there. Fierce competition all round. I really wouldn't want to call this one. Indeed. We've seen some brilliant driving here today, especially from young Callie Mayer. She seems to have made the transition to F1 as if she was born for it. Okay, here we go then. Whereabouts are we? Catch up to Jackson before lap eight. Okay, Kelly, really good start. Keep it up. I'm not finished yet. So we're on lap five of this Grand Prix. And Aiden only a couple of places uh, ahead of us. Let's use overtake and burn off some of this energy. Oh, well, we nearly went into the back of the Alpha Tauri there, but we are through. Thank the Lord for that, and now we got Norris just ahead of us, then uh, Aidan Jackson just ahead of him. Absolutely a chance on Lando Norris as we dive down the inside and we are through just about. That's pretty close. Well, this is a great run on Yuki Sonoda. Don't think it's wise to. Have a go at him down into here. But well, hopefully we can get a nice run down the kilometre straight. Okay, yeah. gap to the car behind. Car behind. One point five seconds. And we are through. I don't think we're gonna get DRS here. So it's going to be Sonora having a look to try and get back through here. Oh! Feels like we've been pushed along the straight there. Oh, a little bit of damage. That's not good. Finishing the top ten. Yeah, I know, Callie. I'm sorry about that, but it's happened now. It's over. Let's get your head down and focus. Come on, we'll talk about it later. Have we still got our? Yeah, we've still got our bad front wing. Hopefully, we'll be okay. Got a chance on Ocon almost immediately. Wow, that was a heck of an impact. Let me know you're okay. Well, already in the slipstream of Esteban Ocon. DRS enabled. And we are through. We're increasing our gap on the car. Okay, well, we've managed to catch up to George Russell. It's been a, a great performance to be able to do this with a, a damaged front wing, but job's not done yet. Need to get past George Russell on this start-finish straight. And here we go. We've got an excellent run. DRS enabled, and we are into the top ten. You're in the top ten now. Keep it up. That's exactly what we needed. Very, very good. 
And now we've got Lance Stroll and Sergio Perez not far ahead of us. Chance to get into the top eight. This has been by far the toughest challenge so far. This is a chance to go down the inside of Lance Stroll. And we are through. That was an excellent manoeuvre. And now what a great chance we've got. Well, Charles Leclerc has won on the final lap of this race. And now right behind Sergio Perez. Need to have a great run up to the finish line now. Gonna have DRS. But I don't think it's gonna be enough. Check and flag. Only ninth place. Don't get the bonus this time. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. Well, in spite of the drama amongst those at the top of the standings, so much of the discussion today has centred around Connor Sport. Absolutely. A bittersweet race for them today. One historic debut, one DNF. I mean, you couldn't write it. And talking of that debut, what did you make of Callie Mayer's first ever start? Well, I am so excited to see Callie racing in F1. It is great for the sport. She is a phenomenal talent. I can't wait to see what the season holds and her career as a whole. And if today is anything to go by, the name Callie Mayer is one that we'll be watching with a lot of interest for many years to come. Ferrari are at it again. An excellent performance at today's Grand Prix and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there. Okay, post race, not an ideal start. A misunderstanding between the new teammates forces Aiden to retire from the race. And do you feel extra pressure at Connor Sport? It must be difficult with your dad looking over your shoulder. <sighs> Look, it's F1. It's not possible for me to feel any more pressure than I already do. So, no, it's not an issue. Kelly, have you felt any pushback from anyone in the F1 world, just with you being the first female driver in the sport? No, everyone's been amazing. And I'm not the first, I'm just the latest. How's your brother? Are you really just keeping his seat warm? Uh, you'd have to ask him that, um, but he is getting the help that he needs. And no, I have no intention of giving up this seat. What happened out there between you and Aiden today? Uh, it's just a mix-up. Um, I, I thought he was letting me through on the entry, but he clearly had other ideas. We spoke to him earlier, and he said it was deliberate on your part. Any comment on that? Uh, it was just a misunderstanding. You've always gone by Mayor, and now you're in a team financed by your father, driving in your brother's seat. Would you go back to the butler name? Should have expected it, right? I thought you did. That's not what I mean. I mean, I'm a woman. I get it. I'm happy to talk about it. Then what is it? Well, it's always the same, isn't it? So you're a woman, and then every question about Dad, about Devon, about the butler, name. Just forget about it. Oh, I can never get away from it, can I? The only question about the race was about Aiden. Well, you know, maybe if we'd let it run a little longer, there would have been... Casper? Don't defend them. Sorry, you're right. Sorry. <sighs> Look, it's fine. I'll be faster next time. The incident at Baku, do you think she did it on purpose? She did do it on purpose. Yeah, check the footage. So you didn't warm to her? We weren't the best of friends, no. Oh dear. <laughs> right, the Baku roundup, the Connor Sport conundrum. Here's Evelyn. Hey, Mum. Callie, I couldn't be prouder, darling. Well done. Oh, thanks, Mum. It was a good race. Felt great out there. Oh, it was a, a good, good race. Oh, no, what is it? What, what do you mean, what is it? What's what? I can hear it in your voice, Mum. It was a good race. No, it's nothing. Go on. No, no, it's just that... You didn't do it on purpose, did you? 
<laughs> when you clipped poor Aiden. I can't believe you're even asking me. Did you really raise your daughter to behave like that? Well, I'm really not sure. It was an accident, Mum. I'm, I'm hanging up. Oh, of course it was. Uh, bye, darling. Lots of love. Right, interview requests. The interview requests are still flying in. It's all very encouraging, but we need to figure out how to manage your time. However, one or two people seem to be under the impression your interview was cut short today, which isn't a great look. Let's chat about it this week. Just a quick one. I've got a few media types I could introduce you to that might benefit you in the long run. I presume you'll be home the week of Silverstone. It'd be the perfect opportunity for me to arrange a lunch or two. No pressure. I know you're busy. Let me know. Measurements. We know you had to make do with a few generic fittings today, so thanks for that. All the parts we measured, we, we measured, will be ready ahead of the next race. It's important everything's feeling right, and we look forward to making the car as comfortable as possible. Right at the British Grand Prix, with an inauspicious start to their new driver lineup, Connor Sport hope for more consistency as they head to historic Silverstone. Got a department event for Casper Ackerman here. Hey boss, got another one for you. Connor Sport uh, scheduled to take part in a feature article for leading motorsport news website. Senior management and the drivers have requested to attend a photo shooting interview. There's an issue. Cali is refusing to attend due to Davidoff's attendance. How should we handle it? Um, her attendance is non negotiable. I appreciate the delicate situation. Uh, Kelly's but the team comes first. Mm. Let's compromise. Uh, your old friend and former F1 driver and current journalist Lucas Weber has been in touch. He's keen to do peace. I know you and Lucas have a good relationship, but the PR team is concerned that your history is so well known. I'll think of it as a puff piece. It's a risk, but I think the coverage will be good. Let's ask Lucas if there'll be anyone else from the scene who can fill in. Uh, yeah, let's go for that one. Okay, right, into the news. Jackson hasn't been shy. Is Devin Butlin retired? Andrew? You seen this latest article doing the rounds today? Three weeks later and the press are still going with narrative of the rivalry at Connorsport. Still! They just need an angle for Silverstone. Paid no attention. But they're right, aren't they? And it's not like Kali and Aiden are suddenly treating each other like teammates. They just need time. It took me a while to warn to Aiden back in the day. <sighs> well, that's because you were a grumpy old man. <laughs> yeah. Well, something's never changed, I guess. Now you're just grumpier and older. I'll leave you to it. Ciao. Bye. Okay, there's still some focus about the rivalry. Anything we can do to play that down would really help. Andreo's not happy. Okay, I think we need to discuss the possibility of telling Aiden and Cali about the terms of the contract with Davidov. It might stop the infighting. I know, I know, we agreed to keep it between us, but we can't risk it getting out of hand. All right, here we go to the race then. Mid-race with the crowd behind both drivers at their home Grand Prix. Cali Mayer is facing stiff competition from a teammate, Aidan Jackson. What is Aidan's problem? OK, we'll have a word. He's been so late into these corners, I have no space out here. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk to him, Kelly. This is still about Baku, isn't it? Let's see what we can do here. Fighting for 16th and 15th, you know, it's not exactly amazing, is it? I do love a good race around Silverstone, though, so let's see how we get on. Coming into Maggots and Beckett's and you can see how much quicker we are than Aiden here. Here 
And we are with DRS. And we are through. Well, around the outside of Norris, uh, no, Piastri, sorry, that was a great manoeuvre. We've got a chance on Nick De Vries here. And we'll also be down the inside of Ocon. Oh, it's Gasly actually, but we are through nonetheless. Now Fernando Alonso and Joe Guan Yu just ahead. Got Fernando Alonso and Joe Guan Yu battling it out. We're just gonna try and take the shallower line, and here we go. A little bit of VRS out of the corner, and we're past Fernando Alonso, and now a chance to pass Joe Guan Yu in the cops corner, and we are through. That was awesome. And now we're up into tenth place. Beautiful manoeuvre. Great chance on Norris this time. Going to be a little bit under pressure because of Carlos Sainz. Try and keep the gap around the outside there. And now go for that inside line. Up into Cops again. Going to be a little bit further alongside, I think. Oh! Well, we managed it just about. Oh, ho. that was close around that corner there. But we are through. And here we go. DRS on Sergio Perez now. Should be a nice, easy manoeuvre. And it is. Chance to get past Yuki Sonoda in a P6. Very good. Okay, final lap of this British Grand Prix. It's looking good for Cali here. It's going to be a P6 and the fastest lap. Very, very good. And uh, well, Lewis Hamilton has won the British Grand Prix. And over the line we come in sixth place. A great day for the Brits. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. You see, this is just another example of the Connor Sport drivers antagonizing each other. Yeah, but you've got to look at Ackerman as well. He's the one that can sort this situation out and so far that he's letting them run wild. His job is to keep control, and no matter what the season, no matter what the driver, Connor Sport just can't seem to gel as a team. So you've got to ask the question, really, what will it take? <laughs> After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. There he is, good old Lewis. And here we go again. Callie, this is your first ever F1 race at Silverstone in front of the home fans. So just try to put into words what that means to you. Yeah, I mean, just to see the number of fans cheering for me really spurred me on today and I used to come here as a little girl to watch the races, so it really means everything. It's a dream come true, to be honest. 
Well, I have to say, it was tight out there once again between you and Aiden. You're not giving each other much space, are you? <laughs> I'm happy to give him space, uh, but figuring each other out on a track is a process. It takes time and it needs to work both ways. Right now, I feel like he's being a bit more excitable on the track than I'd like, but I hope we will get there. <laughs> Now, naturally, there has been a lot of speculation about the role of your father, Davidoff Butler, in securing your seat at Connor Sport. Just what do you say to the critics? Okay, <laughs> well, um, look at Gasly, Leclerc, Russell, and now everyone's suddenly surprised that F1 team signed an F2 champion. I'm here because I can drive. People need to get a grip. Well, thank you for chatting with us. Great to have your time. Okay, very good. Right, uh, British Grand Prix post race. Cali manages to get the best of Aiden at Silverstone, but Connor Sport continue to look like a team divided. Let's have a little look at the news. A team in crisis. Is Jaden Aiden Jackson happy? Hey, Mum. Cali, you saw the interview. Would you like some loving parental advice? Not really. Yeah. All this stuff about your father, I mean, you do know there's an element of truth to what they're saying. Like it or not, you've got to acknowledge it. I don't have to acknowledge anything. You can't make it go away by ignoring it, Cal. People will say all manner of nonsense if you don't accept it. She's privileged, they'll say. She's out of touch. I don't care what they say about me. Of course you do. You're only human. I'm just here to drive. If only it were that simple, darling. Yeah. Uh, look, I've, I've got stuff to do, okay? Think about it anyway. Lots of love. Okay, about the interview today, just be wary about denying your father's role in getting your seat at Connor Sport. There's a danger people start thinking you're privileged. Spielberg press call, just a quick message to remind you about the feature piece that's been written on Connor Sport. This is driver focus piece, so we need to ask Callie and Aiden to give up some time to take questions. It should be already be in your calendars please be careful what you say over the team radio the press are hungry for even the smallest disagreement okay i did not like aiden not at all why not i thought he was immature about what happened in baku I, like i never really got over it he was aggressive on track and the paddock talks he just wasn't happy at Connor Sport. Thought he was too good for the team. He just had a bit of an attitude problem. It's already complicated. And I've told you they don't need to know. Well, it's your call, of course. But the dishonesty makes me uncomfortable. We'll talk about it later. Yes? Let's make this quick. Or maybe we could give Casper a bit of our time. This wasn't scheduled. What, are you too busy for us now? Just tell them, Casper. Andreo, please. Can we get started? Yeah, Aiden's got a meeting at Mercedes he needs to get to. Enough! Enough! Okay? This... This is what we have to talk about. It has to stop. Understand? If we can't pull together now... If we can't pull together... We are finished. Wait, what does that mean? Andreo? It means that if we don't finish fifth or higher, Butler Global will pull funding. And I don't think we'll find an investor to replace him. Not now. Wait, what? Casper? Yeah, it's true. Well, then we're finished. Andreo? We're finished. So yeah, Dad brought me onto the team and then immediately threatened to shut it down. Why would he do that? It's kind of his thing. Hmm. Austrian Grand Prix one week later now with rain forecasts at the Austrian Grand Prix. Connor Sport hoping the gamble of an early pit stop for Cali pays off. 
OK, Kelly, I'm sure you've got questions, but we think we know what we're doing here. We've got information that says more rain's coming, and so, because we're the first ones to come and make this change, we can turn it into an advantage. So on your outlap, let's make it all count. Copy that. So, beat Alpine and Alfa Romeo. Our first, uh, or my first experience of wet weather in this year's game, so I'm intrigued. See how we get on. Let's see if we can catch up to the others. The rain has started, but uh, surely people are going to be flying into the pit lane now. Of spare energy. Okay to use your overtake button. Aiden's in the pits. Aiden in the pits. Can use some overtake as we fly around the final couple of corners. The RS has now been disabled, so here we come. Under the start finish straight, where are we going to come out? Coming through now. I don't think it's going to make that much difference. Okay, the stewards have now disabled DRS. DRS is now disabled. There is Gasly, and we are through on him. Chopin, you in ninth place as it stands. Yeah, didn't really help us too much, did it? Of course, we don't know where she was before. Surely she couldn't have been much further down than this. Let's go down the inside of Yuki. And we are through. Very good manoeuvre. on the inside of K-Mag it's a good manoeuvre got Fernando and Joe Guan Yu just ahead let's see how we get on here well here we go this is a, a chance to get past Aidan Jackson and uh Esteban Ocon, we're going to go round the outside of Aiden here. And we are through, and there's Ocon. And the next car in front of him is Valtteri Bottas, and he's the last car we will need to overtake to complete our objective. So there we go, perfect. We're past Ocon nicely. Very well played. And now the chase after Bottas is on. Here we go, we're right behind Bottas already. Just got so much more the pace than him. Eased off for the time being, but we've still got a lot of standing water out there. We're happy for you to stay out on the inters for now. So here we go. Start finish straight, we are through. Okay, gap ahead is so three, main objective completed. Seconds. Now let's try and go and get Max Verstappen. This is a great chance to get past Max Verstappen. Lots of ERS deployment here. But uh, he's going to try and get past Stroll. We're going to try and go for the old switcheroo here. And this could be a great chance. And we are past both of them. What acceleration we got out of that corner there. And we are up now to fourth place. Absolutely brilliant. barely any water out there as well that's something we have to consider and we're going to have to come in for dry tyres see the dry line developing ok final lap of the race and we've got a, a chance to potentially we'll take these two here we Got DRS enabled. Got a bit of overtake to use as well. And here we go then. This is our chance. But Norris comes over to defend that inside line. He's having a little look at, at Leclerc as well. But we stay on that outside and we are through. Two laps of fuel left. 
It's an awesome manoeuvre. And now, Charles Leclerc, are we going to be able to get past him? Or is he going to manage to stay in front of us? It looks like we're going to have a chance to have a go at him going into the final couple of corners. Oh, this is going to be so close. He's on the outside as we come round the final corner, but we take the chequered flag in second place. Excellent result for Cali Mayer and the Connor Sport team. Second Callie. place. Come like on. That. You might just prove me wrong yet. Cali. Well, we said at the time that it might have been too soon, but in hindsight, Connor Sport really did make the right call. Mayer made the pit stop, changed to wet tyres ahead of everybody else. That was a turning point of the race. Yeah, you've got to get these decisions right, and not everyone did today. It's great to see Connor Sport taking their chances like that. Wonderful race by Mayer. If they want to improve on last season, they've got to try and do something different. Well, they did that today, they timed it well, and Mayer, well, she continues to impress. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sports that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. And there she was on the podium. Fortune favours the ball. The early tyre change allows Cali to get the jump on her competitors in the midfield and secure a solid finish for Connor Sport at the Red Bull ring. Cali, great race. What do you mean, prove you're wrong? I was just trying to congratulate you, that's all. Prove you wrong about what exactly? I didn't mean anything by it. I was just saying well done. By reminding me how little you actually believe in me. Callie. You are a piece of work. But it was a great race. You said you'd keep him away from me. I'll talk to him. How is he getting involved on comms? Well, he didn't ask, he just did it. Yeah, he'll do whatever he wants until someone stops him. <laughs> I said I'll talk to him. That was a great result out there today. Let's forget about your father, okay? Yeah. Good. Looks like he's found someone else to talk to anyway. Okay, all right, let's have a little look at the news. Trackside chats. Nicky Louder in there as well. Casper. Hey, look up foot measures in place to clamp down on who can access Team Radio now. Thanks, I guess. Hmm. Look, it turns out your father talked Mark into it. Says something like, You're not going to keep me off Team Radio on my own team. <sighs> yeah, well, I guess Mark can be a bit of a pushover at times. Um, look, I've stopped Davidoff from attending this press thing later, so that's something at least. Oh, thanks for that. How did he take it? Uh, didn't like it. I think he sees all of this as publicity for Butler Global. Yeah, sounds like Dad. Yeah. Look, I'll stop by later too. So see you there. See you there. Okay, new comms clearance. Oh, here we go. Mum, Kelly, I just got your text. To prove him wrong, he's got a nerve. He really gets to me, Mum. I know I shouldn't let him, but I can't bear it him and his little games call him out on it Callie say something I did I spoke to him and he said he didn't mean anything by it he said I did well today unbelievable what else do you expect an apology I I don't know what to do you keep driving Callie that's all you can do right now the rest is just fluff if only it were that simple oh fair point don't envy you darling not one bit. I'll leave you be. Bye, Mum. Okay, just an email to outline the new on-track radio comms clearance protocol that we've put in place. It's effective immediately for both Aiden and Callie. Okay. Please be careful. Andreo's keen. Okay. Uh, we were the best out there. Quick reminder about the press call. Okay. 
at the Italian Grand Prix one month later as the grid heads to Monza. Fractures within the team continue to play Connor Sport. Got department events coming up. Hey boss, got a couple of minutes? We're getting reports of a bit of a conf confrontation down in the garage, when, which we thought you should know. Callie overheard a mechanic bad mouthing her and she called them out on it. The mechanic called her privileged and out of touch. She said she won't make it F1 because she doesn't understand how punishing it can be. How do you want to handle it? Sounds to me like Callie already took care of it. This doesn't We are a team. Arrange a meeting with the mechanic. I want to give them an official warning. Yep. Connor, Connor Sport features out with some obvious tension. Questions in the press and social media begin to circulate. That there's an irreparable rift. Oh dear. Here we go then. So we've got our news. Jackson on the move. Hey. Guess who's on his way in? What, Davidoff? He just called the office. Arrange him a lunch. He says he treats the office staff like his uh, uh, personal assistants. He shouldn't be a drain on our resources. Look, I'll, I'll talk to him. Can you let the garage staff know he'll be wandering around down there and make sure we have the usual room set up for him? Yeah, no problem. Roll out the red carpet. Davidoff's in town. Last I heard he was joining us in Singapore, but today he just shows up. Don't let him get to you like this. We'll handle him. <sighs> Remind me why I went into business with him. At least you have an F1 team. For now. Look, he wants us to succeed. Doesn't always feel like it, Cass. Huh. I'll see you in the meeting. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, Daffodoff, uh, change of plan. Disharmony in the garage. Okay. And the spotlight article. Okay, right, uh, let's uh, go to the race then and see how we get on. we got another department event here. Could you take a look at this, please? Right, Andrea was cornered by a reporter asking if he regretted getting into F1. Um, this might require some damage control. We wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for Andrea's commitment and passion. You also have to apologise. No, let's support him. Everything else looks fine. It's just about that rear wing. I don't want to sacrifice any more downforce. It's okay, it's your call. Now, let's uh, check the weather again in an hour. Oi, oi! <laughs> Did you miss me? Hello, sis. Hi, bro. Jackson. Devon. How are you, Devon? I am excited. Very excited to be involved again. Now, you, you pretend I'm not here. You carry on, please. Involved? How? Oh, you know, just a uh, little bit of this, a little bit of... Uh... Involved? How? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And what does Andreo say to that? He'll agree, Casper. It's fine. Were they pleased to see you? People are always pleased to see me. And what was your new role? Uh, I guess you might call me a liaison. Yeah, I just, I love to liaise. Dad wanted me to talk to people, keep people's spirits up, give some friendly words of advice, that kind of thing. But uh, it was tough. Yeah, Aiden still had that ego. Still thought he was too good for the team. Wouldn't listen to Casper's advice. That was a problem. And then Andreo, he was worried about the future of the team. He had dad breathing down his neck. And Callie, well, let's just say Callie wasn't really looking for my advice. The whole thing was a mess. I mean, honestly, I'd only been gone five minutes. Okay, mid-race, where the brothers return certain to ruffle a few feathers at the already shaky Connor Sport. Callie focuses on the race and the continuing battle with her teammate Aidan Jackson. 
two Connor Sport teammates not exactly doing each other any favours this afternoon. For me, they're a little bit too close for comfort. What is Aiden playing at? Tell him to back off. OK, Kelly, he knows. Clearly he doesn't know. Oh. Yeah, same old stuff. Jackson really wants to make a move out there, but Mayer, no chance. Not letting him pass. Towards the curve of Grande we go. He's going for it. It's really close. It's too close. There goes Mayer's front wing. Oh, Aiden Jackson, what happened there? This now seems like a running theme at Connor Sports. Yes, this race is critical for them. When are they going to just pull themselves together? OK, box please, Kelly. Let's get that wing replaced. This is a joke. Box this lap, please. Box this lap. Yeah, copy. Okay, here we go. We've got to hit and replace your front wing. That's our objective. <laughs> So here we go. Sixth and seventh in this race, amazingly enough. And that's a Mercedes out of this Grand Prix. Is it Lewis or Woods George? Possibly George, I think. Anyway, here we come into the pit lane. Here we go. Eight seconds. It's not bad there. Okay, stay clear of the white line on the exit. And now what we gotta do, finish in the points, finish ahead of Jackson. It's our bonus objective. That's gonna be very, very tricky, but uh, one of my favourite tracks of the calendar. I'll give it everything. Okay, what a chance we've got here on Nico Hulkenberg and Yuki Sonoda on the Curva Grande. It's going to be very, very close and, well, we managed to just about perform a double overtake there. We'll settle for that. Oh, Piastri trying down the inside here. Very, very close. We're going to be all right. Excellent exit there. And we are through. Well, we got past Logan Sargent. Let's see how we get past Lance Stroll. Should have DRS here. There we go. This is a decent chance to get both Alonso and Lando Norris. Here we go. Beautiful. So now we got four seconds to make up on Aiden Jackson. In two laps. Well, look how quickly we've caught up there in Jackson here. We've pulled out nearly four seconds on him in this lap. It's been pretty ridiculous. Through Ascari and up towards Parabolica. This should be enough to get past him. Okay, just two laps of fuel remaining now. Well, he's going to have DRS on us, but uh, okay, final lap. Let's go. we'll still final be able lap. to stay in front of him. Look how much quicker we are than Aidan Jackson. It's quite unbelievable, really. We might even be able to get Lewis Hamilton before the end of this race. 
on our soft tyres here. Uh, wasn't too difficult to get past Lewis Hamilton in the end, and uh, it's going to be another top performance for Kalimir, finishing in fifth place despite the contact. Max Verstappen wins once again, and here we come over the line in fifth. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. So Mayer managed to pull it back in the end, but if this continues, Connor Sport are in real danger of sabotaging their own chances of a decent finish this season. There is so much talent in that team, and yet they're their own worst enemy. The reason they're not making progress is each other. Ridiculous state of affairs. And it's clear that Jackson continues to be the aggressor. Is it personal, Natalie? Well, you know, it does seem that way from the outside looking in, but all I know is they just can't go on like this. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They've performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout. OK, let's... Uh... Got the post race interview. Now, once again, another eventful race out there today for Connor Sport Kelly. Is the team sabotaging its own chance of a decent finish this season? <laughs> Punditry is your job, Natalie. No, I am not here to comment on those kind of narratives. I will stick to driving the car. Thank you. Everyone is talking about Devon's return to Connor Sport today. So, is it good to have him back around again? I mean, doesn't matter what I think. The truth is, Devon's still got a lot to offer the sport. Um, it's right that he's still around, and I'm pleased that Connor Sport has been able to facilitate that. Well, look, I'm loath to ask how bad your relationship is between you and Aiden, but there's been more contact today, so just enlighten us. Well, we can't do that one. Oh, it's actually fine. Um, people love to speculate and quotes get taken out of context, but there's no problem at all between me and Aiden. I mean, nobody's ever happy when they get in a scrape on track, but to say there's any kind of issue between us is nonsense. Now, in the past, you've refused to acknowledge the role of your father in getting your current seat at Connor Sport. Why is that? Of course I acknowledge him, but it's really not a big deal. I mean, if you have a contact somewhere, it helps your prospects. That's just life, and that's really all there is to it. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, right. Uh, post race. Uh, the Connor Sport teammates continue to shoot themselves in the foot with Mayer. And Jackson getting into another on-track collision. Fortunately, Cali manages to turn it around and finish within the points. But it's clear to all that Connor Sports' problems aren't going away anytime soon. Okay, your new superior. Okay. What more can we say about this? Okay. Go on then. Let's have it. Is that any way to answer the phone? Say your piece, Mother Dearest. Well, fine, if you want to be like that. I was just calling to say your media instincts are markedly improved. Gold star. Thanks, Mum. That's reassuring, I guess. You seem less hot-headed, more in control, more likeable, darling. It's good. <laughs> because no one liked me before, is that what you're saying? Well, no, you can just be a difficult person to warm to, that's all. Wow. Okay, um, tell me what you really think, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll let you go, darling. Ciao. Okay, well... Uh, we'll hang up the call. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, Singapore Grand Prix. Several weeks later, with their dysfunction clear for all to see and with only a handful of races now left in the 2023 season Connor Sport looked like a team on the ropes as they head to Singapore Slanging off Hey Ooh. <laughs> Scared the life out of me mate I didn't mean to Picking up any tips I don't think they like the short straights here 
You didn't mind them, did you? <sighs> I love this track. Always do well here. Huh? Well, used to. How are you doing, Devin? Me? Golden, mate. Loving life. Yeah, sure. You know what it's like to leave all this behind, don't you? Yeah, it's the most difficult thing I've ever done. Yeah, well, uh, like that. But, uh, I didn't choose this, Casper. I didn't, um, I didn't. I know. But you came back, right? How's it treating you? Ups and downs? Hmm. How's our old teammate doing? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think he's happy here. <laughs> he still thinks he belongs in that top team, see? He's never let it go. That's the problem. You know, I, uh... I could have a word with him. I mean, if you think that might help. Ah, uh, it's... Uh, it's all a bit dead. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I understand. No, Devon, I mean it. Yeah. Scout's on him, mate. Oh, dear. Hey, we need your input on this one. An anonymous source has talked to the press about how Cali must not be criticised at Connor Sport. Sounds like it came from the mechanic who had a run-in with Cali in the garage. The press are really latching onto the story. We don't know for sure that the story came from. I'll talk to the press and tell them everything's fine. No, let's go for cautious. Uh, Devon's just been in. He said the two of you had a little chat and that you both agreed and needs a bit of extra motivation. Is that true? He suggested setting an expected finishing position as third. No offence, but uh, that seems a bit overly ambitious. What's your plan? Let's do it. We need to try something. Fans really latched onto the statement behind Andreo. People have been sharing their favourite passionate Andreo images ever since. It's become a hashtag. Lucas's publication. There's no fear anyone thinking it was a puff piece. Amari was pointed and strong with his critique. It's caused a bit of a stir down the garage. Morales being a bit low. Oh no. Right. Okay. Let's keep going. Just have a little look at the emails first. Okay. Andreo, did you read his email? I glanced at it. He's a sly old fox at that one. Thank you for finding a place for Devon. As if we had a choice, Casper. As if it, as if it was our decision. <laughs> yeah, I know. How's it going with Devon anyway? Ah, uh, he's still struggling. But he does really care about the team, so, you know, maybe it'll work out. Well, that's something at least. Rather him than his father, right? Rather neither of them, Casper. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, I'll see you. <laughs> yeah, see you. Okay, let's go to the race. Here we go. Did Casper really want you to talk to Aiden? Eh, I read between the lines. Look, Casper's good at lots of things, but I, uh, I know people. I don't have to get in their heads. And I wanted to help Dad, help the team, so... Uh... Leave me alone. Listen, I'm just saying, mate, if you were such an incredible driver, you wouldn't be a Connor Sport, would you? Sorry, it's the truth. No offense. Well, maybe I won't be here next season. <laughs> oh, dude. You know what your problem is? Yeah, you. You think you're better than the team. I remember, I remember when Aiden Jackson was just, just happy to be behind the wheel of an F1 car. We all liked that guy far better than this one. You never liked me. <sighs> no. But Casper did. Once upon a time. Oh, you're different now. You think you're too good for the team. Your head's stuck in some imaginary big three seat in Cloud Cuckoo Land, mate. No, 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 no. You have got to drive 
the car you're in. You're lecturing me about ego. A subject I know well. Oh, right. I get it. So you're allowed to be cocky, but I'm not. Is that it? There's a difference. How can there possibly be a difference? This isn't you. This isn't you, mate. Oh, get lost. Be true to myself. Drive the car I'm in. The wisdom of Devon Butler. Should I be living my best life, too? Just drive the car you're in, mate, yeah? Ciao. Okay, with Devon's words still repeating in his head, a focused and determined Aiden Jackson looks to return to form. Marina Bay hosted a Grand Prix that briefly ran in the 60s and 70s, but the Garden City re-entered the calendar for good in 2008. We missed it for a couple of years, but it was great to come back to the Singapore Grand Prix. We're here at the Marina Bay Street Circuit today, located in the heart of Singapore. The circuit consists of 23 corners, 13 to the left and 10 to the right. It's a track that's incredibly technical, so don't expect to see the drivers taking too much of it at full throttle. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and starting next to them is George Russell. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Perez, Fernando Alonso, Verstappen, Leclerc, Norris, Joe, Ocon, Stroll, Mayer, Jackson, De Vries, Magnussen, Sonoda, Gasly, Bottas, Sargent, Hulkenberg, Sargent. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Well, it's a beautiful night here at the Marina Bay Circuit, and as ever, a really enthralling Singapore Grand Prix ahead of us. That's right, Crofty. And while there's not many surprises at the top of the standings right now, there's a lot to watch out for further down the pack. One driver I'll be definitely keeping my eye on is Connor Sports' Aidan Jackson. He's been less than consistent so far this season. Okay, here we go then. Aiden, you know what you're doing here. Let's lock in and give it everything. Show us what you got. Let's give it a give it a whirl. We'll underfuel the car slightly. And here we go. Let's see if we can get into the top five. Lights out, away we go here in Singapore. It's not a bad getaway off the line. Are we going to be able to go down the inside here into turn one? We do, it's a little bit of contact, but I think we're okay. We get through it unscathed. That was lucky. But we're up to P10 already, which is uh, exactly the sort of start we wanted. So a chance now straight away on Lando Norris. We're going to try get through here oh it's so close but uh, Norris stays in front have we got damage don't think so but definitely felt draggy in the a straight line there and he has a chance go down the inside of Norris and we are through chance on Charles Leclerc here same place that we took on Lando Norris and we are through Our chance on Sergio Perez Oof, nearly went wrong there let's just close the door Another chance on Perez here. This time we're going to go round the outside. 
Make sure we leave him space and that is a good battle. We are through. Here we go then. Great chance with the DRS ERS as well. And now we pull to the outside of Max Verstappen. Oh, he makes contact with us, but I think we're okay. Nice move. And now Fernando Alonso is the man we need to get past. Here we go then with a great chance to overtake Fernando Alonso. And we go down the inside and just about manage to make it stick. I think we both went wide there. Also came around the corner, but uh, we managed to stay in front. And now, fifth place. We're trying to get up to Carlos Sainz before the end of this Grand Prix. Okay, big chance on Oscar Piastri here. Round the outside we go. And we are through. Well, coming into the pits for our pit stop. And we are in just about there there is one of the mercedes cars we'll hold them up a little bit as we come through and that's uh, lewis hamilton who has been leading this grand prix okay off we go Back we are away race. lovely pit stop 2.4 pit seconds that was our last stop we are away no scheduled pit stops let's go We'll make sure we don't leave the white lines. So 3.1 behind Lewis Hamilton. But should be able to undercut the other guys here. Oh, look at this, we're coming past the pit lane and that's George Russell in P2. We've managed to undercut a hell of a lot of drivers there. We're now up to P2 and chasing after our compatriot Lewis Hamilton to try and win this Grand Prix. There you go, faster slap of the race. Don't know where that came from particularly, but uh, it's a good time. Got five laps to go. Here we are then, on the final lap of this Grand Prix, and uh, well, it's been fairly uneventful since the pit stops. We have just been closing in a little bit on Lewis Hamilton, but uh, nothing too serious, and well, George Russell could be the one that makes moves on this final lap, but uh, I think that would be my only criticism of this mode would be did we really need to do this full race you know could we have done certain parts of it these are the the, the chapters that i find the least interesting uh within the whole story and uh, i'd be intrigued as to, to what you guys think as well but you know, we really don't need to be driving the whole of this race I think those short, snappy chapters are the best ones. But George Russell definitely catching up to us. I think our tyres have gone off the cliff a little bit. Come then we're coming around the final few corners we're going to finish second in this grand prix it's been a, a good performance but uh could have been better we were closing in on hamilton at one stage and i don't think george is going to have quite enough to pass us by the line we finished second place in the singapore grand prix a podium excellent drive the whole team have worked especially hard this weekend and that my friend is a fantastic reward well done well the results are in there we have it what a race that was
The sheer grit and determination shown by some of the drivers out there today, Crofty, was nothing short of incredible. Elbows out, especially from Aidan Jackson. Loved his race today, and he finally delivered the sort of performance that we know that he's capable of. So whatever they're saying to him over at Connor Sport, he seems to be listening to. Well, Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. Okay, here we are at the media pen. Now, Aidan, you have had your ups and downs this season, but tell me on the whole, are you pleased with your overall performance? Today's race should be a normality, not an exception. You know, if I can get a few more performances like today, then, yeah, I'll be much happier. Okay, I'm going to be cheeky, go straight for the jugular. If you had to choose a teammate between Callie and Devon, who would it be? Um, I'm getting into trouble whatever I say here, aren't I? Can I have Casper back as a teammate instead? I'll talk him out of retirement. Now, Aidan, you have recently hinted that you're not entirely happy at Connor Sport. Tell me, is it true? I think of Connor Sport in the same way I would my family. There are a lot of personalities to manage, but we're a tight-knit group in this team. We might not always see eye to eye, but in the end, we all want the same thing. There has been wild speculation on whether or not Connor Sport can even be on the grid next season, so can you tell us more? That seems like a question for the investors, but no one's funding Connor Sport as a charity. They're funding it as a business. And if a business isn't successful, then there's definitely an issue. Well, thank you for chatting with us. Great to have you time. Okay, right. So, Singapore Grand Prix, Paul Strace under the floodlights in Singapore. Aidan Jackson puts in a magnificent performance for Connor Sport. Okay, I've got set update. Uh, Okay. Hi, Davidoff. Aiden, quite the answer you gave today. Didn't have you pegged as a man of business. <laughs> yeah, um, I didn't really think anything of it. Of course you need to make money. Don't we all, Aiden? Yeah, but Connorsport must be profitable, right? We're still running the projections for next season. So it, it's, it's not certain then? Time will tell. You said it yourself, it's just business. Thanks, Aiden. Okay. Come on, I just want to check out. Why, because he told you to? Stop making this about him, just talk to me. We raced in a lot of the same races growing up, and one of us would always have a better race than the other. So in the car, on the way home, one of us would be happy, and the other would be completely miserable. There was no middle ground. It was like it was impossible for us both to be happy at the same time. And it's kind of been the same ever since. Look, it's my job to talk to the drivers, Callie. Yeah, and who gave you that job? <laughs> Why are you being like this? Is it, it's not even me you're angry with. Maybe it is. Oh, really? This again? We were kids, Callie. You left me behind. <sighs> Come on, what was I supposed to say? Oh, oh, thanks, Dad, for, for, for continuing to invest in my career, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to decline, just in case I hurt poor Kelly's feet. Of course not. And what? It didn't have to be a choice, Dev. He had the money to fund both of our careers. I just... I wanted you to... fight for me. He never listened to me. He always listened to you. Well, we were young. Yeah. But we're adults now. Yeah. Well, if it's any consolation, I'm not much competition anymore. <laughs> you never were. I'm sorry, Kelly. For everything. You were always faster than me. <laughs> Yeah, I said it. Nice try. I mean it. And did you mean it?
<laughs> of course not. Faster than me? No, 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 no. She was never faster than me. She'd love that. No. But if there's one thing my old man taught me, it's that sometimes people need to hear what they need to hear. You know? Okay, Brazil Grand Prix, one month later, over the last few race weekends, Connor Sport have managed to demonstrate some much needed consistency. The paddock now heads to Brazil for the penultimate race of the season. All right, let's have a little look at the news. It's in the Massa Senna and a certain Senor Hamilton. <laughs> right. Oh. Uh, no, that was a previous call. Uh, aha, here we go. Hey, Mum. Cal, I'm reading more and more about these funding issues. Only an issue if we don't get fifth, apparently. What do you make of it all? Well, he won't. He won't really do it, surely. I mean... It's only been two seasons, for goodness sake. And Connor Sport certainly isn't the worst team on the grid. You have a real way with words, Mum. <laughs> What's your father have to say for himself? I have no idea. You've still not spoken to him? I'm sure you can relate. <laughs> yes, but I mean, I don't have to work with the man. Look, you don't have to like him, you only have to talk to him. <sighs> you sound like Devon. Oh, maybe Devon has a point. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thanks, Mum. I'm going now. Lots of love. Bye. Okay, let's head into the race. Absolutely. Yeah. Why are you doing this? I saw him in the paddock. This would have been Sao Paulo. And I, um... Yeah, I finally spoke to him. I just wanted to know why. If something's come up, I'll uh, call you back. Cully, so I'm uh, allowed to talk to you now. Why are you doing this? Doing what? Why are you being so hard line about this? For this to be a worthwhile investment, Connorsport Racing must be successful. It's just business. It's not, though, is it? Excuse me? Well, why am I on the team if it's just business? Why was Devon? You can't keep involving your family in this and then hiding behind it's just business. This is one of the biggest investments I have ever made. I must take care of the business. Come on. Who do you think will uh, inherit it after I'm gone? Well, Devon. Obviously. I'm, I'm not interested in any of it. Matters are complex, Kelly. But they all benefit the business. They all benefit the family. And ultimately, they all benefit you. You said this the last time you tried to stop me racing. I didn't buy it at 12, and I certainly don't buy it now. I don't understand what goes on in that head of yours. You threatened to end my F1 career. And then you claim it's for my benefit. Have you any idea how much money I have ploughed into the team? <sighs> yeah, that's the thing with you. Money. Nothing changes. I wouldn't expect you to understand. No, Dad. I wouldn't expect you to. You need to be more realistic, that's all. Not everyone survives in F1. You know that. Fifth in the standings. Fifth. Let's go do it. Mid-race, a late safety car has provided Cali Mayer with an opportunity to turn around her fortunes at Interlagos. Safety car's in this lap. Repeat, the safety car is in this lap. That means it's our chance to shine. Come on, you can do this. Let's go. Nope. No pressure then. Here we go then. Green flag. 
Little down the inside of Alex Albon straight away there. So top five finish is the minimum. Top three with faster slap is what we'd like to get. You should overtake. Chance on Hulkenberg here as we head past the start finish line. That's our P11 in this Grand Prix. down the inside of Zhou Guan Yu we'll settle for that now we've got Logan Sargent just ahead then Jackson on the Mercedes cars as well it's Russell down the inside that's a beautiful move and now Aiden Jackson down the inside of him we go as well up to 8th place now this is huge as uh, I think Fernando Alonso leads this Grand Prix we find the inside of George Russell this is just awesome overtake after overtake now Oscar Piastri is next he's in P6 at the moment we're right in his slipstream we're gonna pull to the outside onto the grass we go we just keep foot to the floor though and we are up to p6 and now what a chance this is past Bottas hopefully oh big lock up and well we have to back out of it but we're okay drs enabled we've got gonna have drs on Sergio Perez there's an Alpha Tauri in p2 at the moment as I think it is Fernando Alonso that leads. It's Nick De Vries in second. Pierre Gasly in third right now. As we head up the hill, we're going to try and overtake Sergio Perez here. This is a chance. And we are past the Red Bull. Now, Alpine and Alfa Tauri. A wonderful overtake on Gasly and now Nick De Vries with it another chance here and then we got a chase after Fernando Alonso we have got four laps to go here in this Brazilian Grand Prix Well, what a chance this is to overtake Fernando Alonso for the lead of the Grand Prix. But no, we can't do it. Just dropped off the back of Alonso a little bit here. Have to wait. Here we go again then with DRS. Enabled, we are on to the final lap of this Grand Prix. Or penultimate lap, actually. It's not the final lap yet. My bad. <laughs> okay, this has got to be our chance. We've saved up our ERS deployment this is our chance to take the lead of this Grand Prix we pull to the right hand side and we are through that's a terrific overtake and now one final lap of this Grand Prix can we win it for Calimere I'm hoping we can here we go a little bit of overtake out of the First DRS zone at uh, hold on to first position a little bit wide there but managed to keep within track limits and Fernando Alonso will be pushing hard to try and stop us from winning this Grand Prix here. He is going to be 
right on our back on the end. Our tyres are falling off the cliff. We're going to come out of that final corner with uh, a great amount of acceleration. And we're pulling away from Fernando as we come into that final section. We turn at the final. Is that Glock corner? And now unleash the ERS. Unleash the engine. Because we're going to come up to the line and we are going to produce an incredible victory for Calimere here at the Brazilian Grand Prix. Fantastic race that was. Absolutely loved it. But Natalie, do you think we see Connor Sport next season? Rumours say maybe not. I hope so. I feel like they deserve it. They've been box office for me. They've taken chances, they've been bold in all their moves, and ultimately that's great for us and for the fans. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more, but there's not much of the season left, and they'll be hoping they can carry this form into the final stages. Time will tell. Here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. Okay, here we go into the media pen. Wow, Kelly, a really strong performance out there today. Just tell me, though, how big a role did the safety car play? Yeah, I mean, I really fancied my chances after the safety car. Obviously, it's going to really disrupt the race, but I was able to take advantage of it today. Um, I saw an opportunity and I went for it and it worked out well. Callie, your first F1 season is nearing an end. It must feel like a long road, but clearly you've put a lot into it. And is there anyone else that's been particularly influential this season? Um, I've got Casper to thank for so much of this. Um, he was there for me in F2 last season, and he was the one who fought so hard for my seat at Connor Sport. And without him, I may not even be here. So cheers to Casper. And tell me, I'm not sure I could do it, but how has it been working so very closely with your family? Yeah, it's been a challenge. Um, let's just say we've all got our own opinions. Uh, family is never straightforward, and that's especially true of mine. There are rumours circulating that Connor Sport may not be around next season. Can you comment? Um, that sounds like a question for our investors. Um, I'm sure we'd all appreciate a public statement on the matter. Thank you so much for your time. Chapter 17, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. With Connor Sport future on the line, team principal Kasper Ackerman assembles his team one last time before what might be their final race in Formula One. Okay, so we are running two quite different setups out there today. And you don't need me to tell you how it... You don't need me to tell you how it... Davidoff, that's enough. I'm sorry? Get out. What on earth are you talking about? I've had an entire season of you whispering in people's ears. I'm asking you to leave the meeting. You can't be serious. This is not your team. And after today, it might not even exist. So get out and let those of us who actually care about the result do our jobs. We'll talk about this later, Ackerman. You can threaten me after the race. So be it. You coming, Devon? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I might actually stay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stay. Well, that's up to you. Okay, listen, you all know what's at stake. If we race as individuals today, the team dies. The only way we can survive this, the only way that any of us are coming back next season is together. We all understand this? No, no. Aiden, Callie, look at me, you look at me. We understand this, yes? If you put yourself ahead of the team today, there's no more team.
Callie. We got this. Yeah. And, um... I'm sorry if I was ever... Wow. What? Are you apologizing? Yeah. <laughs> I will forgive you on one condition. What's that? You get your share of the points. All right. Deal. <laughs> Chin up. Okay, here we go then. There's the news. I'm assuming we're going to get a call from Andrea. Yeah. Just going to have a quick look at those. Seems all good. Hey, did you find him? I didn't look too hard, to be honest. Does Davidov ever sulk? Hard to imagine. Listen, I hope I haven't caused you problems. I snapped it. It was unprofessional. Not at all, Casper. It was a delight to watch. You think it'll affect his decision? I've given up speculating, Cass. At this stage, nothing would surprise me. Yeah, well, we better get that result then. I guess we better add. And good luck today, Casper. Whatever happens, I'm so grateful for all you've done. Look, it's... it's been my pleasure. Connor Sport deserves to succeed. If the fates are kind, Casper. If the fates are kind. I'm trackside. I'll see you there. Yeah, cool. I'll be a few minutes. Okay, let's do it then. Let's get into the race. Our final race. We are mid-race uh, with the race underway. Both Connor Sport teammates lock in as they look to secure points they need to guarantee the team's future. You know, before the race begins, anything is possible. Anything. On the one hand, you have the true icons of the sport, certain drivers, certain teams who set the pace, who you expect to do well. On the other hand, you have the underdogs. And we are always there, always pushing for another place, another point, looking for the smallest opportunity, the tiniest mistake we can punish. And in that moment, just before lights out, it's like, it's like the world holds its breath, you know? Everybody just waits. The air is heavy, you know? And I knew whatever happened, corner sport had made its mark on the history of the sport. <sighs> and I was at peace with that. So you weren't nervous? Are you kidding? <laughs> so we know how it stands right now, but just how different might it be when the chequered flag waves here in Abu Dhabi? And it slides out, and away we go! Okay, overtake okay, Gasly before lap nine. Moving through the field, it's time to push. Come on, you got this. Let's see Copy what that. we can do. So we are P13 as it stands. Let's see how quickly we can get up to Gasly. We are six seconds behind him currently. Closing in on Piastri at the moment. You should overtake Button more. It's time to utilize some of this energy. Come on. Should have a good chance at him here out the final corner. And into the start of the next lap. So here we go. Whoa! Curbs nearly threw us off there. We're just about okay. Some of DRS here. Don't think Piastri will have it on the car in front, so 
the RS enabled for us a little bit of overtake as well to try and take us towards our next victim which will hopefully be Lance Stroll Bottas is there as well but yes we have got DRS on these guys now here we go overtake enabled as well Stroll goes to the outside we take the inside little bit of contact but we're okay we're good and now Gasly is the car in front 2.5 seconds is the gap Well, we are right behind Pierre Gasly here. This could be our moment. Not going to overtake just yet. Going to wait for the next DRS zone, but apparently not. Down the main straight we go. Here goes Jackson again, moving up the field. What a great race for him. Yeah, it really is so far, Croft. I mean, it's a circuit he really enjoys. Remember the race in 2021 that he put together there? It was fantastic stuff back then. Who could forget it? Connor Sport need a performance just like that today. May is doing okay. Jackson really delivering. Great stuff, Aiden. Come on, I think we can get one more place here. Push, push. Uh, something's not right. Assessing, assessing, standby. I'm losing speed. Heading down the back straight now. He's in a great spot, but hang on, he's slowing. He's slowing, something is very, very wrong. Yeah, I think he's got a problem here, Croft. I wonder what it is. Could it be engine related? Look, they're throwing their hands in the air on the pit wall, and he's out. And yeah, that's the engine gone. 2023 is over for Aidan Jackson. It's a dramatic exit, and it wasn't what he was hoping for. Something happened up there? Yeah, engine failure, I'm afraid. Aidan is out of this race. Repeat, Aiden's out of the race. Did you get that? Aiden's out. I heard. What? Let me speak to him. What? Why? Just give me the headset. Sure about this? I'm sure about everything. Uh, that's what concerns me. <laughs> Kelly. Devin? Yeah, we've had a chat. We think it's best if you uh, don't push the car too hard. What? Why? Look, you're way back, Cal, OK? We, we don't want to blow your engine too, so just... Just cruise it in and finish the race. It's got to be realistic here. Copy. Sorry, is this a team order? No, Casper agrees. It's just not going to make up that much ground. It can't be done. Just cruise it in, Cal. Trust me, you watch her go. Here we go then. Finish fourth or above. I'm going for it. Kelly, is everything all right? Fine. I'll see you all at the finish line. Okay, so right behind Gasly, we have yellow flags. So for Aiden, I'm guessing. Well, we have a chance on Sergio Perez here. We're through. Great manoeuvre. Brilliant. Nice move. Keep going. We have a chance on George Russell now. DRS open. And we are through. Very, very nice indeed. DRS wide open, don't think we're going to get a chance on Hamilton here. So I'm just going to back out, got plenty of time left in this Grand Prix. And that's a good exit and there you go, DRS open. Starting to close in on Ocon but Hamilton's got more sp straight line speed. But now we've got the inside line on Hamilton and we are through. That was a, a lovely little move. Now Esteban Ocon is next. 
And again, inside line open there and we are through. Alonso next, then the two Ferraris and Max Verstappen. Well, here we go on, Fernando Alonso. This is to complete the objective. Got the inside line, should be able to go down the inside here. And we are through. And now he has Carlos chance for third podium spot pull to the outside beautiful but Sainz manages to outdo us so we do the old switcheroo on him and now Charles Leclerc and uh, Max Verstappen are who we're after in this race Right, we've got enough fuel for three more laps. DRS enabled, but I don't think we're going to be able to get Leclerc here. We're going to have to set it up for the final lap of the race. Done very, very well here. We've pulled away nicely from Carlos Sainz, but uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to win this race, although we are both closing in on Max Verstappen he seems to very much be going slow here it could be a bit of drama on the final lap of this race here we go Abu Dhabi 2023 final lap, final lap. oh and Leclerc well he was pushing us all the way up to the wall there we go around the outside of turn one and we are through he backs out finally and now we are chasing after Max Verstappen. As I say, I don't think we've got enough to get him back here, but we will try. DRS enabled, let's see. Oh, ERS, sorry. But it's actually Charles Leclerc who manages to get back past here. No, just got to hold back. We've got to get a, a good exit here. A little switcheroo. We're going to have DRS as we come down. This back straight here. This is uh, good from Charles Leclerc. He's not, it's not done too badly there. And I think he's going to hold on to second now. Quite poor from us, really. Let's try and give it a go into the final corner. Still chasing him. It's going to be Max Verstappen that wins the final race of the season. And it's going to be Leclerc that finishes second. We finish third. And to the checker flag for one final time. That is some race from Cali Mayer. What an incredible performance by her today. Connor Sport, I'm sure, will be very delighted with that one. And if you believe the rumours, Ant, this is a team whose future has been in doubt. Surely, though, they've done enough to return next season. I think they've been wonderful to watch. Well, that was awesome. Elation with Aiden having to retire. Callie puts the team on her back and manages to drag a Connor Sport car, kick it and scream it. Across the line in miraculous finish that secures fifth in the constructors. Awesome. Okay. Can I take a bow? Hey, Devon. Not bad today, sis. Not bad at all. You did that on purpose. Did what on purpose? Oh, come on, Dev. Cruise it in. I don't know what you're talking about, mate. You, you technically, you went against the team order. Poor form, that. <sighs> I can't believe I missed it at the time. It seems so obvious now. Listen, you want to lay off the sauce, Cal. Seriously, it's a bit embarrassing. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised Casper let you. To be honest, really surprised. 
Okay, I'm going now, because you're not making any sense. Okay? Ciao! Yeah. Ciao. Okay, let's finish. Oh, here we go. Dad. California. That good enough for you? Uh, look, I, I thought we maybe could grab a coffee tomorrow before we head off. My flight's not till three. Yeah, um... Have a chat, talk about next season. It'd be good for us. Um... Well, think about it anyway. The offer stands. You make it sound like a negotiation. It always is with us, Kelly. You let me know. Any more calls? We'll give it another five seconds or so. Okay, let's finish the season. It was amazing. I'm not sure I've ever seen a race like that. I was wrong about Callie. And how did you feel about the engine failure? There's no such thing as the perfect car. The one that failed us was the same one I got us here in the first place. So, you've just got to drive the car you're in. Well, everyone's an individual. Which means that everyone is, um... ...motivated a little differently. Take Devon as an example. He always responds well to having his ego brushed, to being told that he's the best. His greatest fear is failure, so it gives him further to fall, keeps him hungry. Callie, on the other hand, uh, has an innate drive to prove people wrong. If someone tells her something's not possible, she'll do everything in her power to achieve it. A sort of uh, stubborn determination that can be harnessed. <laughs> and then there's Aiden. I mean, when he started in F1, people thought he was a nice guy, but he was incredibly ambitious. It's just what makes Aiden tick. Which is why I may have started a rumor or two about uh, interest from other teams during his time at Connor Sport to stoke that ambition. Keep his eyes on the horizon. A lot of people might see that as manipulative, wouldn't you agree? Well, of course. <laughs> Motivation is manipulation. It's the same thing. Is it? Look, the end justifies the means. After all, it's just business. Looking forward to next season? Just let me at it. Will you stay next season? I've told Casper I'll stay if he does. Do you still have a job after your run-in with Davidoff? <laughs> Well, we'll see. We did it! We secured the funding! What a team! And that's <laughs> all that matters. Right now, yes, that's all that matters. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're done? Yeah? Cool. And there it is then. Very good. I didn't mean to skip the uh, credits, but there you go. Uh, final impressions then of Breaking Point 2. I thought it was good. It was engaging. Um, it was a cool storyline. Quite predictable, uh, obviously. You know, it's not going to be uh, <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2, but equally I enjoyed it. I think it does have a place in F1 games, but uh, seriously, I, where these uh, sort of shine is when you have the mid-race stuff and the cutscenes and you have to take over and, and do it for a couple of laps. And I think when you're doing the full race, that's boring, personally. Um so if they were to do it again that would be my feedback shorten the amount of time you're actually on track get yourself involved in the in the story because i don't particularly care about winning a race for connoisseur as soon as you hit your objective i'm kind of out of there because there's no reward for 
doing better, if you like. But uh, yes, I enjoyed it nonetheless, and hopefully you guys did too. If you have, give it a big thumbs up down below. And, uh, of course, subscribe for plenty more F1 content. The focus is now the career mode, uh, whether that be with Alfa Romeo or Co-op Career. You make sure you check out the other content on this channel uh, and F1 Manager 23 as well coming out on the horizon. Thanks once again to EA for uh, the early review copy and uh, the ability to get all of this recorded before release day. That was uh, really, really useful. So thank you very much to EA for that. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching and goodbye.